my chat people hi one year let's go Love you, his ass. Let's go to the beach each. Good morning from Hawaii, EI.
people happy. I'm going to come. What's going on, everybody? I hope everyone's having a fantastic evening, afternoon, pre-noon. No matter where you are in the world, I'm Hassan Piker, and this is the Hassan Ivy Broadcast coming to you live from sunny California, Los Angeles. Everybody's favorite himbo is live and alive. I almost died, dude. <laughs> I, uh, I'm i alive currently, but uh, I almost I was not alive. And I will tell you about that in a little bit. I guess I pocket. I guess I like did a pocket story. I don't know how I'm even capable of doing that. That's really strange. But I saw a bunch of people being like, dude, what the hell's going on with your Instagram story? Uh, very weird. Luckily, it wasn't anything like worse. You know what I mean? Luckily, it wasn't anything crazy, but damn you sunburn pretty bad. I'm not. This is just, this is exclusively because of I don't know what this is. I don't know what this is. Someone told me that this was my Instagram story. I just deleted it. So. Dude. My face is red currently. My face is red currently. Not because. Uh, not because I got sunburned. Even though I was out in the sun. It's red because. And it looks kind of shiny currently. Because I have some some cream that I put on my eyes. I don't know, something you guys sent me on my PO box, but um So what happened is I trained this morning. I trained this morning with my uh with my trainer and it was so intense. In the end, we did high intensity interval uh, training, 20, 20 second sprints, followed by 40 second uh, break, 20 second sprints, followed by 40 second breaks. And I literally almost died in the end of it. By the end of it, on the last one, and I did that for six. I did that six times. It's not even that much. It's not supposed to be that much. In the aftermath of a workout. And I by the end of it because i'm in such poor shape by the end of it i almost died I, I was so close to puking i've never actually i've never actually thrown up in an exercise before but i was so close to puking and my ears were full i don't know how to describe it like my you know how like there was ear pressure in my ears two months foggies i almost in the words of uh, famous incel uh, Alec Manessian, my life status almost converted to death status. Has. Okay. 
where I could, um, like my ears felt like I was, uh, you know, when you get on an elevator on like a, like really on a high rise and the elevator goes up real fast, like your ear pressure, your ears are full. I don't know how to describe it. Whatever that was happening. I barely, barely was able to walk to my car. Barely was able to walk to my car, like at, in the aftermath of it. They were like trying to talk to me, and I just like couldn't hear anything. Four months. Hot. And, um, and I had like these crazy, th these crazy headaches. And I think it's because I just have like terrible circulation. I, I just, I need to open up the lungs up. a little bit more. Like I just haven't done it. My ears did not pop. No. My blood pressure was through the roof. Yeah, absolutely. And it was like, I was like, I think I'm going to die. Like, I just I actually thought I'm going to die. And so basically that's what was going on. I was like, this is the end. This is where I die. And um, I got into my car. I sat down. My legs were like giving out. Like they were just giving out. They were just, they were no longer working. And I sat in my car and I turned on the AC. And I could hear the AC like, Ten months. <sighs> Let's pop back with in every same poop forever. With every Love heartbeat I had, I guess, my ears would like open up and close, basically, like as if I had. You guys have an iPhone uh, uh, AirPods? Like, it felt like I was going between uh, transparency mode and and noise cancellation. Like, it literally felt like I was just like putting my noise cancellation headphones on and then taking them off. Noise cancellation headphones on, taking them off. That's how I, that's how the AC sounded. Now, Hi. having said that, having said that, it's fucking intense, but now I feel fucking great. Now I feel incredible. Chat, make sure you to call your mom and tell her you love her hassle. Now I actually feel incredible. You know, I, I, uh, I shifted into a, into an astral plane. Recommending Celeste for next gaming stream. I shifted been. into an astral plane where bonus, but I had a great my eardrums playing. were not functioning. Okay. I shifted into a plane where I was, uh, where I thought I was more athletic than I actually am, I guess. But you know, you got to push through those workouts. You just got to do it. Did you record your podcast today? No, it's tomorrow. I don't know why you're like asking me this. Uh, we record on XQCL, on Wednesdays XQCL, now. XQCL, XQCL. Can I get a welcome to the jungle? Yeah, and uh, Draco came out and was an adult. I was like, oi, bro, I'm fucking What's Draco Malfoy. Yeah, you wanna? You fancy a fucking meat shanking? I'm not a minor no longer. It's even for the fucking hypothetical. We are going to a fucking high school for wizards. It Six still feels kind of weird making a joke like that because I'm very clearly a minor. So yeah, that's that's what happened when I went into the, the astral plane and I Thanks shifted. For all the great content, Daja. And he was like, Avra fucking Kadavra, bro. Oi, it's Avra fucking Kadavra time. Your shirt is fucking insane. Happy eight months. Don't lie. You try to shift today. Yeah, I tried to shift to fucking go to sleep early. That's what I tried doing, except I finished Mandalorian last night and I have an announcement. I already, I already gave the announcement on, on a Twitter, but my announcement is Mandalorian's very good, folks. I was wrong. Very good. I said decent. 
and then I finished the season, and it's very it's good. So yes, bullying works. Was off. Fudge your ads. Um, Don't the first time like four town. episodes of the first season, like the first half of the first season, is brutal though. It's kind of wild six months, that six they months, more love you hassle. They, like, put that out there. I mean, if it wasn't for the the Stan culture that revolves around Star Wars. I don't Thank think people would go through that. If it was episodic, if it was you released episodic on TV and it wasn't Star Wars IP, it was any other kind of show, everybody would be like, this show sucks. And then unfortunately, no one would watch it. I has hope and then they would miss day. out on an Love awesome show. Streams. Please keep up the great stuff. But it was really good. I know it was released episodic, but it was released at a time when it was like people were desperate for good Star Wars IP. Exactly. And most an importantly, nail. people are mind coming over to Star Wars out? stands like I they're crazy. Need some help. So I think it also got me comfortable with. Um, it got me comfortable with like. Just. Not wanting to expect modern uh things that i'm used to in movies like good and relatively realistic uh fighting sequences like i think they deliberately made the fighting uh i think they deliberately made the fighting look like the old star wars kind of bad you know what i mean like cheesy and uh it turns into a wonderful western uh it, it turns into a wonderful western but the first four episodes are literally a fetch quest with like awful like if it was a video game which by the way it in a lot of ways it does resemble a video game like I love space westerns, so I went in with the best mindset possible. I love Mandalorians. I love space westerns. I love, you know, space bounty hunters. And it was, it was, it was such a bore. Like it was such a drag. Like they have all of the money on the planet and they were showcasing some of like the most boring, uh, facades. Like they, they hyper-focused on you know desert for the most part like it, it just felt like they were cheating that was not rosario dawson that was zoe saldana wasn't it was it rosario dawson or was it zoe saldana that was on mandalorian or was it rosario dawson Oh my God, it was Rosario Dawson. Oh my God. Well, she was awesome. You know why I thought it was Hassan confirmed face blind. They don't even look alike, man. Wait, really? Do you want to know why? I wonder why I thought it was. I wonder why I thought it was Zoe Saldana chat. Just think, just think for a moment. Just think why I would have assumed that this sexy alien, this sexy alien would have also been Zoe Saldana because she literally has played hot aliens like that's that's what she does okay i didn't even think about it i was like oh god this is yeah like, like this is yet another sexy uh zoe saldana alien moment you know but uh you know from guardians of the galaxy all the way to avatar obviously but the real the real girl i'm simping for in star wars is actually uh not Rosario Dawson, who was super cute, but an awesome, even though I think that was just fan service for the most part. It's like kind of odd that she was in there. No, not Gina Carano, dude. I wish she wasn't such a fucking chud. I wish Gina Carano was not such a chud. 
Because, like, I feel like she plays that role well. She plays, like, the role of the, like, muscly uh, lady very well. No, the real... You can't... You guys can't... You guys can't figure out uh, who who I, I was simping for. Her acting is so bad, though. Toad lady? No, actually, I don't even know what her name is. So that's what I'm looking for right now. No, not the old repair lady. No, one of the Mandalorians, dude. What the fuck was her name? Not Bo-Katan. No, no, no. No, Bo-Katan's like second in command. I don't know who that is. Oh no, she's an anti-vaxxer. What the fuck? No! No, she's so hot. Why? Why? Why is she an anti-vaxxer, dude? No! Sasha Banks and AJ Styles meeting on a flat earth where there's gravity. Otherwise known as Mercedes Vernado, Banks made her acting debut in the second season of Star Wars spinoff, playing Night Owl Cosca Reeves in a small but reasonably prominent role. I mean, she killed that role, dude. Another member of the cast, professional wrestler Sasha Banks, being canceled for liking an anti-vaccine post. Wait, that's it? Okay, okay, she might not be anti-vaxxer. Chill. Both the wrestlers are chuds. Sorry to break it to you, but most black people are anti-vaccine. Yeah, dude. Thanks. Thanks for breaking it to me. It just a fundamentally false uh, statement. Just. Like a fundamentally false statement. Found the CEO of black people. I'm black as fuck. Oh shit, dude. Never mind then. I'm sorry. I didn't realize you were the CEO of black people. As far as um people who have received one dose. Um the uh, Hispanic community has a lower one dose rate then I think then uh, the black community does. Speaking as a POC though, there are a ton of POC around me who refuse to get the vaccine. Pretty disappointing. I know. No, I know it's a problem. The largest percentage still is like white men for the most part, conservative white men that don't want to get it. Anyway, there is also a Delta variant coming back. Sasha got the vaccine, but she's been shifty on IG. If that helps you simp better, bro, I, she's, I, I'm, I guess I'm an anti-vaxxer now, dude. Uh, I hate to break it to you guys, but I think, uh, the vaccine, I'm very skeptical on it now. Okay. I simp. That easy, boys, for me. Yeah. 
damn she's like straight up a wrestler i had no idea anyway of course she's fucking chud what is this sopranos prequel trailer wait they did a Sopr there's a new sopranos coming out okay all right i'm just fucking blasting out that i'm i'm live okay hold up i'm just gonna do that right now okay here one all right let's just post daycare is open there is a new sopranos over here maron Talking about how I almost died while working out. And then some news. Get in now. Lots of content. www.twitch.tv slash Asanabi. We've officially moved on to the summer. Mando bored me after the third episode. It was boring. It, it for sure. In the beginning, it was boring. I urge you to stick through it because it gets good. Did you explain what that Insta story was? Yeah, I fucking pocket dialed. Like I pocket Instagram uploaded. Here's BTS meeting our Boston Dynamics robot dog. Robot dog. Capitalism is crazy. Why no Bumble Deets in the social banner? Is that even how that works? Like, you can't really find someone on Bumble with, like, a code. Anyway, a QAnon thinks the Miami disaster was an op because McAfee was in the building. That's awesome. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that again. Okay, let's watch this. The many when I was a kid, guys like me were brought up to follow codes. Hey, jerk off. What'd you say? What? What do you fucking say to me? Eh? What do Antonio you fucking say Soprano. to me? I wonder if I can talk to you alone for a moment, Mrs. Soprano. On the basis of the Sanford Binet, he's high IQ. You can't prove it by me. He's got a D plus average. Well, he doesn't apply himself, but he is smart. The results tell us he's a leader. Okay. Controversial take so far, even before we finish this. This is fan service. We're watching this because we all love and miss James Gandolfini, who was an incredible actor, an incredible actor. Okay. R.I.P. To the fucking pride of Rutgers, New Jersey, if you know what I'm saying. All right. Uh, it's, uh, it's my alumni over here. All right. But, uh, and, and everybody wants, like, everybody loves Sopranos. One of the greatest TV shows of all time. And that is the reason why they did this. The reason why they did this is because, you know, his son's on it. His son's playing Tony Soprano. And... Uh, you know, that's it. Ankle dick. Growing up with the family. Takes a toll. Maybe an ambassador to England or France. You're my nephew. My life to gamble. I want to do whatever I can to help you. you may be a my gift to you. I want to go to college. I can't get called with shit like this. Look, you take the speakers, right? At the same time, you say to yourself, this is the last time I'm ever going to steal something. It's that simple. Let me go talk to him. He only listens to Dickie. Wait, it's a... Uh, this is a... Uh... This is a movie? Or I, if it's a movie, then yeah. Fuck yeah, I'll watch it. If it's a short... If it's like one of those like uh, cool short uh, 
things that's not going to turn into like a like a seasonal thing then yeah then uh, sure it, it'll still be all right it'll just be all right but like i don't see longevity in this gotta do something about dicky Matasani. maybe some of the things you do aren't god's favorite <laughs> By example, we'll make the right decision. This kid's got what it takes. I can pass for Italian. Hey, thank you. Thank you. Excuse my fucking bet myself. Go. Ray Liotta was in there, by the way. I saw that. That's crazy. Because I fucking fed myself with a healthy diet at Gabagoo. All right. That's why. Because I lived in New Jersey. That's how it works. You fucking step foot on that beautiful soil. On that fucking Goddard State Parkway asphalt, and all of a sudden you're fucking Italian. It is what it is. I'm listening. Stay out of his life. The so many saints of Newark. Damn, that's just fan service. Let's be real. It's, it's fucking fan service. It's just fucking fan service over here, babe. Hey, what are you going to do? All right? What are you going to do? I'll fucking take it. I'll fucking take it. You think I'm not going to take it? I'm going to take it. I'm going to hear for it, you know? Sometimes we got to get this fucking fan service going. I worked on the music in this trailer, Pog. Hell yeah, dude. Uh, one of my favorite James Gandolfini movies is, uh, is, is, uh, what is it called? In the Loop? Is that what it was? It's so good. Armando Iannucci, who is actually British or Scottish, actually. Oops, sorry. I can't. He's, uh, he's, a uh, Scott man who, uh, wrote, uh, some of my favorite, uh, political comedies. And he heavily featured uh, James Gandolfini. Also the creator of Veep. I'm a fan. Yeah, The Thick of It as well. Also very good. There's so many people in the chat who are supposedly working at the same time. It's fantastic. You want to be an honorary Italian? I got connections, pal. Listen. Motherfucker, I'm already an honorary Italian. What are you kidding me? Did you attend movie theater last yesterday? What? Anyway, you look at Miami Vice today. Hell yeah. Thank you. I just wore, I'm wearing the, I did watch Pixar's Luca. It was disrespectful to the Italians, all right? It was. Anyway, dude, as far as Mandalorian goes, uh, stick with it, and it gets really fucking good, okay? If you stick with it, it gets really good. Those are my final thoughts on Mando. Tarantino was on JRE. Uh, yeah, sure. We'll watch that. Wow, like we all said it would, LMAO. I mean, dude. Transgender woman won Miss Nevada. Hogwatch is going to go wild tomorrow. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Here we go. Trans woman wins Miss Nevada U.S. pageant making history. Cataluna Enriquez, 27, who only began competing last year in the cisgender pageants, was named the winner on Sunday in the competition of the South Point Hotel Casino in Las Vegas, the Las Vegas Review Journal posted. Part of me feels like, um, like passability obviously is not the metric for, uh, whether someone is a valid trans person, but I do, I have talked about this before where it's like, uh, it, it certainly, I think, helps with uh, the more uh, mainstream understanding developing, right? 
But even though it's not the end all be all, it's just the first step. And then the other part of me, I feel like pisses people off because they're like so, they just get so confused because they are already sexually confused and frustrated and believe in these like rigid, uh, rigid, rigid binaries. And then they turn around and they're just like, oh my God, she's so hot. And then it's like, wait, fuck. Uh, I, I need to, mm. And then it like whiplash, you know what I mean? She's hot, but uh, uh, it's like upsetting me because it destroys everything I know about the world. Would you say passability is mandatory or not? No. What the fuck? No, of course I wouldn't say passability is mandatory, dude. That's insane. Like, there's hella people who, one, don't even have the access or the funds. Two, uh, come from different backgrounds so they can't. Or three, don't even want to. The weebs want you to react to Chainsaw Man since yesterday. Please help. No. I don't know what that is, and I'm not interested. Stop. Instead, we are going to look at this uh, Boston Dynamics robot dog interact with the BTS people. So how does this work? Like, are, do stands just like love the robot dog now? Like automatically when Please BTS, to like this, this friend. worries me a little bit because like, what if BTS was like, you know, tomorrow they're like, we're sponsoring racism. Like, do the stands also follow or is there like, uh, I mean, I don't know how the fuck they would sponsor racism to begin with, but you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you don't say that. Spot. Spot. Sponja. Oh. oh. <laughs> the idea of BTS crossover. What if BTS sponsored the ad breaks at the top of the hour? Happy 15 months to me. Like, how would you guys feel about that then? And tin boxes are costing would you like the segues then? Lord help me. Or would you be anti- on the segways. And of course, uh, you know, even if you like the ad breaks or not, there is a way to avoid them. You can use an ad block or a VPN, or uh, you can subscribe with a $5 subscription or a free subscription. With a Twitch Prime, you get one free subscription. You can avoid the ad breaks, but uh, they're coming right now. Whether they're uh, collabing with BTS or not. Boom. I hate you, man. Sorry. Am I gonna get a DMC for this? That one is even scarier because it's not even a fucking a dog. Okay, I can't show you this. I can't listen to this music. I don't want to get clapped, but.
speaking of BTS stands, stands we are going to talk about Ali London today. Uh, one of my greatest locks, one of my greatest calls of all time was uh, that Ali London is uh, going to get picked up by the, uh, the conservative community. Uh, that uh, British kid who uh, claims he's now, or they are now a uh, Korean. It's disturbing to me that my brain makes me believe it's CGI, but I know it's not. It's disturbing to me because they promise that they're not going to use this for combat or uh, overseeing like uh, Amazon processing facilities or whatever. But I do believe that they're going to do that. Price. The NYPD has them already. It's scary. I thought that was like a fake story. What happened? You know? I just, I know that they're going to, they are going to use this. To murder people. Like, there is no Mike shot. Mikulski They're like, oh, yeah, we are not. We're not. Course. We're not. But it was a fucking joke. Check it out. They're definitely going to use this to murder people. Like, no shot. Oh, so it was real. So people said it wasn't real. They said it was an art project. But I guess it wasn't an art project then. Test. What happened with that? That's so strange that... When it first came out, people were like, oh, you fools. It's actually an art project. They were made for DARPA challenge. Of course, they're going to kill people. Is it is true? Boston dumb natics spells their rubrics for Islamic State. What? Entertained. Please check out Chainsaw Man. It looks really good. Uh, once again, uh, the... Once again, the anime weebs are practicing zero self-awareness and routinely advocating uh, for me to watch some random fucking new anime that's coming out. I'm not going to do it. Shut the fuck up. You are being incredibly annoying. Oh my god. I will start banning you. Twenty months, Pappy. Have a nice stream, Pappy. <clears throat> I got mixed up because the Boston Dynamics social media talked about Technology another art project around the same time, so it was real. Yeah, I mean, I guess it is. I'm pretty sure Boston Dynamics literally got DARPA funding at some point. I mean, most companies do. Uh, the American military, or at least the CIA, is part of the reason why we have a GPS system. Uh, Google Maps. The CIA has a funding arm. And this is not like a conspiracy. This is very open. Uh, the American military and the CIA uh, have uh, funding arms that will... Uh, that will go out and uh, go to Silicon Valley and fund Looking certain projects that they believe location. will be also good for... American uh, military tactical advantage. Uh, thank you, Thamasius, for the fat playlist once again. Um, I was going to say, Castle. it has, we're officially in the summer. Like, we are officially in the summer. Why do I say that? It's because the news is hitting a cycle of repetition and boring shit. Like, things are not popping off because everybody's just like trying to survive. Uh, inside of their Pacific Northwestern apartments where it gets uh, 120 degrees when it never did before, so you don't even have an AC. So now you're like, oh my God, I need to go purchase an AC. You're too busy with all of that, so you are not really focusing on Fuck. other stuff like uh, the news.
Have you watched Jujutsu Kaisen? Shut up! Weebs. Weebs. Exercise shutting the fuck up challenge, okay? People hey chat and I'm gonna Jujutsu Kai months Kaiben your if you mother, my okay? A happy Stop. Early B day for him as he's probably I'm gonna fucking the and told me to watch you. Karate cool. chop your mother in the vagina. Hey, weebs. Evangelion isn't even that good. Fucking fight me. Stop. Stop. Don't even say that. They're going to be fucking extra annoying now. Look at this, like, Chainsaw Man's going to be bigger and bigger, better than Jujutsu Kaisen. I don't Love care. Hassle, hassle, Shut the hassle. fuck up. No one cares. You already have every other corner of the internet. Just go to your little caves and have your conversations in your little anime caves. Not here. Okay? Stop. Fuck. Has to love this community and you are Jean. I'm as far left as and as pr insane progressive as there is, but how could we have cooked up the worst political slogan of a generation with defund the police? Like we're a bunch of suburban socialists, lol. I love this take. Okay. I love that people have this take over and over again as though like, <laughs> as though like black communities are actually super fond. Uh, marginalized communities are actually super fond of the police. And it's the white people that don't like cops. And uh, uh, cops absolutely are, are not treating motherfucking senior art critic in the New York magazine. New Vegas, like the, the entire existence of the police force is to make sure guys like Jerry Saltz, who live comfortable lives in a fucking Brooklyn brownstone, away from uh, the, the pogo people, uh, pogo me and outskirts of the recently gentrified areas where like black and brown people live. Okay, it's so strange to me that people make this argument as though like, oh yeah, yeah. Are there fucking white nice academic I like the uh, uh, focused socialists out there? Yes, certainly. But it's so fucking stupid that uh, we make this seem like this is a hyper socialist movement. Is disgusting. And then they memes always point up. to like older black conservatives as uh the reason as to why like black people actually love the police also ultimately got accepted into collage wide the abolition of the police force even for like police abolitionists still comes with a replacement okay defunding the police is not abolishing the police was and even abolishing the police is not about the content full-blown so police abolition nice. there has to still be some form of organized unit that maintains the presence of law and order, which is what the police do. Eight month pog. It's very stupid. The arguments are so stupid. Perhaps the reason why defund the police was uh, seen as a bad slogan because it didn't get the same kind of momentum that Black Lives Matter got, even though Black Lives Matter originally was a bad slogan too. It always was a bad slogan. BLM was BLM was considered a black, bad slogan when all of these like rich white liberals said BLM is, you know, a little, a little too much. Like I don't understand. It's so hard to remember that now. It feels like it was a different universe, and you're never going to believe me because of the overwhelming sea of support we saw for Black Lives Matter and how much it's uh, gotten commoditized at this point that Walmart is like throwing up the black fist and saying black lives matter. So it's so dumb uh, that we have these arguments over and over again. It also didn't even uh, become a tangible policy position. Two months ago. Anyway. They said BLM was exclu exclusionary. Why do fucking rich white people insist on seeing every sociopolitical conflict through the myopic lens of their own self-actualization? Okay, Bo Burnham. Hassle. It's uh, hyper-individualistic American uh, attitudes. That's what it is. If there, there should not be defunding of the police. If anything, more funds are required to improve the police system, higher regulations. Yeah, that's crazy, man. 
Police funds have uh, Did you know him have have become gigantic over the past like uh, sixty years, and yet uh, you know police brutality is is great. It's just totally totally abolished. More funds definitely are working out well for the cops. Less police brutality overall. Eight months, Pog. For sure, direct correlation. Give them more money so they can. <laughs> Give them more money so they can, you know, uh, build better uh, legal teams PPL for like when they murder 14-year-old black we kids and stuff. Test everything that and also better weapons uh, to crush we'll protesters with. From this clown. Like, everybody wants accountability. Black people, white people, everyone wants cops to actually protect and serve. I don't think that's a ridiculous fucking ask, okay? That's all people want. They want cops to actually protect and serve their communities rather than operate as an occupying force, which is what they do. Cops to a wealthy white person or just a wealthy person in general in a nice neighborhood Nine months is a, a presence of law and order, like creates and instills a presence of law and order. But in black and brown neighborhoods, the presence of police create uh, a, a presence of disorder and lawlessness because they operate above the law. It should have been reforming the police. Everyone agrees with that. Even the police, we progressives are idiots, babe. I... It, <laughs> It's a wonder we can even feed ourselves. We're right. We do not know how to talk to people or win when winning is ours. Gotta love us. Yeah, totally. My man said, my man said, babe. Why are you being a dumb? He was obviously talking about funds to the right areas, not fun to militarization of the police, like training and psychology. Dude, that doesn't happen. It has not happened. It used to be called community policing. Okay? And it still is. Reform is yet another way for police budgets to inflate and take all that additional funds to, you know, not train properly. But instead to buy military surplus gear. And it's not necessarily the funds that is the issue. The real issue is... <sighs> the real issue is a lack, a clear lack of accountability. Start by civilian-led police departments first. Where there's more oversight. Anyway. Defund the police is the dumbest idea. Giving less money to the police won't solve the problem. <sighs> You guys got it. You're right. Yes. If the NYPD, instead of getting $6 billion, got $5 billion the next year, that would mean that all cops are dead on the streets. We have vigilante groups. You know, mob justice is occurring. Lynching is happening all over. Um, the, the additional billion dollars going to uh, trying to uh, manage the socioeconomic conditions in which, like, crime exists in which crime uh is a reality that we shouldn't fix any of that we should just keep trying to throw band-aids on the problem over and over again one year poggies thanks for being the best left voice on twitch we talked about this so many times uh but i guess it, it just doesn't matter We love to name things stupid, disconnected, or unclear names. Look at CRT named by academics and now purely on the name Republicans are making it out to be something it isn't. Yeah, because they're fucking academics. They're, they're not having a conversation. Critical race theory isn't for, like, normies, dude. Like, it's for, it's for legal scholars. W what the fuck is this take? I'm sorry. Legal scholars should be diluting uh, their naming conventions because... 
uh, one day uh, the reactionaries could take hold of it and weaponize it against uh, whatever they see fit. We get some Hassan, former master of TYT, reacts to TYT. People claim to love the free market, but when they say cops are bad, they should get less money to seem to flip the script. Yeah. Yeah, I know that uh, if, if legal scholars named it, instead of critical race theory, they named it like uh, racism in law. I'm sure that, that that would have automatically and magically changed the minds of those at the Manhattan Institute a think tank specifically created to bastardize said concepts and create like an outrage machine, they would have turned around and been like, damn it, how are we going to stop these guys now? Oh, well, I guess I'm magically not going to look for new cultural uh, things that I can start, uh, an, you know, start a, a, an outrage uh, over. A manufacture outrage over. Shit, dude. Fuck. Did you see Natalie Wynn interview Chomsky? Anyway. You have to admit though, if you talk to black people, you see defund the police isn't exactly a simple universal thing. One big issue is the is it's felt police response times in black areas are far too slow. That's literally not even a feeling. It's just the truth. Isn't it like double? Police response time in black neighborhoods, is it like double on average? So yeah, it, it is, it's not just a feeling. It is the truth. That's not because uh, the police are not funded enough. It's because they hyper-focus on areas that they want to focus on so giving more money to the police should have improved response times uh so far it's not a funding problem it's an attitude problem i guess or it's where they want to use their funding anyway i live in minneapolis and the police literally just stopped coming into calls in the reaction to the outrage yeah Why are staff members making fun of my audio? I don't know. Uh, is that what they're doing? <sighs> How do you reform this? This is 76 year old Gwen Levi who was returned to prison for not answering a call from her federal probation officer while in, in this computer class. They told her lawyer because she could have been robbing a bank. We're going to treat her as if she was robbing a bank. Dude, I, I always assume that 76 year olds are robbing banks. Yeah. Everybody's got like a little bit of, everybody's got like a little bit of fascism in them. You know, they just want to like, they don't want to deal with the complex problems and fascism offers like a pretty solid, a uh, wonderful story for you in the form of a solution, Absolutely. which is like, well, crime is an issue. How do we deal with it? Give the cops tanks, okay? That's, you know, it'll be, a, it'll be a war between the good guys and the bad guys. The good guys being the cops who are supposed to be our protectors and the bad guys being the criminals who are bad because they're just bad. They're just bad people. Uh, they're not bad or uh, engage in bad actions as a consequence of their socioeconomic conditions, their social, or their material conditions. They're bad because they're just bad people. They're evil doers. But we need a good guy, like an Avengers force to come in and just like wipe them out, beat their asses into submission. Oh, well, that's how we got here. That's how we justify uh, a horrific, uh, dehumanizing uh, criminal justice system that 
is responsible for a quarter of the world's incarcerated population here in, in America. Despite only being 4% of the world's entire population, we house, we cage the world's, uh, a quarter of the world's entire uh, prisoner population. Anyway. G. It's coming, it's coming, the baby is coming. Polemism but is less fascist than America's current carceral system. So the baby don't come kick oh, pretty, nah, nah, that's worse. Polemism is the only, is the only uh, theory or attitude I've ever seen that's like Me worse too. than the American carceral system. I mean, it literally revolves around straight up throwing criminals into the meat grinder. No, it's pretty fascist. All right, let's see. Let's see what Bernie's saying. We are living through a completely unprecedented time in the American economy, and things are so confusing and novel that major trusted newspapers can't even seem to agree on the basics of what's happening. New York Times, The Wall Street Journal, both have reports about the effect of cutting unemployment benefits in Missouri and the impact it's had on the job market. The Wall Street Journal, which I would say generally tends to align its POV with that of business, appears to suggest that cutting unemployment benefits has seen an uptick of people in Missouri returning to the workforce. Quote, the number of unemployment benefit recipients is falling at a faster rate in Missouri and 21 than other states, canceling enhanced and extended payments this month, suggesting that ending the aid could push more people to take jobs. Well, the New York Times seems to be suggesting basically the opposite. Quote, Workforce development officials have said they have seen virtually no uptick in applicants since the governor's announcement, which ended a $300 weekly supplement to other benefits. But perhaps the most interesting thing here is that both pay I think we should just force them to go back to work at gunpoint. I don't understand. Like, if they have a, a, a tidy little amount of money saved up from, from all of the uh, additional welfare that they got, we have to starve them out. And if we can't starve them out, we should just force them back to literally flipping burgers for me uh, so I can yell at them at gunpoint. This is the way to solve it. Yeah. Don't pay them more. That would be unacceptable. You know, because then my the cost of a burger could be raised by uh, 30%. You know, corporations will never be able to figure out uh, that, will never be able to readjust their pricing or uh, other areas that they spend money on in an effort to improve wages. Like, they'll never eat into the profit margin. They'll raise the prices. Okay, they'll raise the prices by how much? 30 cents? Oh, no. Papers also cite the same St. Louis Hotel's recent hiring spree to back up their report. While the Wall Street Journal seems to imply those jobs were filled because unemployment insurance was cut off, stating that no one showed up to their job fair until two weeks ago when the Element St. Louis Midtown Hotel had a breakthrough with 40 job seekers. New York Times, however, includes what the White Wall Street Journal leaves out, the hotel's increase in both wages and benefits. The hotel, which is on a major bus line, started raised its starting wage to $13.50 an hour, the second increase in two months. It also offers benefits and a $50 a month transportation allowance. The number of applicants shot up to 40 from a handful the previous month, after the second wage increase. And even that's not enough, but hey, you know. Same state, same economic story, two very different conclusions. Senator Bernie Sanders, independent from Vermont, is the chairman of the powerful Senate Budget Committee. Last year, he fought to get Americans $600 extra of unemployment benefits in that COVID stimulus bill, which were then continued, uh, and he joins me now. This is You're the reason I can't get my burgers, brother. What the fuck? You're the reason my favorite burger joint no longer has the same amount of slaves, brother. What the fuck? I hate you, Bernardo. This is, I don't even think this is as big as a problem. Maybe in like my neighborhood or the areas that I've been in in Los Angeles, I don't see a lot of businesses. Uh, it is purely anecdotal. Hassle. I don't see a lot of businesses suffering from, uh, you know, a, a lack of, uh, enthusiastic uh, people trying to get jobs. 
But then again, it is purely I work for my state's it's sampling bias. Uh, it's a purely anecdotal. Problem. Um, I'm sure it, it could be uh, happening uh, in other places. But regardless, this is plagiarism. What? Why is that? Okay, whatever. Um, but regardless, the solution is, you know... The solution is probably higher wages. <laughs> this has become um, an ongoing question among economists, and I want to take a sort of open mind to it because it does seem to me like it's not an insane idea to think at the margins it might be having some effects of, of people's behavior. Um, what is your sense when you look out and see that all these Republican governors have unilaterally taken the step to cut their folks off this, this extra supplement and what it means for people and what it means for, jo for, for job markets? Well, from day one, Republicans opposed uh, adding a supplement to normal unemployment. If you go more into depth into if you raise wages, the cost of everything goes up argument, it's bullshit. First and foremost, a lot of these corporations, um, a lot of these businesses have a profit margin that they can tap into and lower the profit margin for owners and those who own a, have an ownership stake in the business in an effort to uh, improve the wages in an effort to increase the wages. Another thing that they can do is, yes, increase the cost, right, to the consumer. Um, same with small businesses. I don't know why people say, what about small businesses? Same with small businesses. Now, it, it is the same with small businesses. You're, you're like looking at edge cases no matter what, which the government could help uh, and, and uh, eliminate that burden. So, ultimately, uh, ultimately, no matter which way you cut it, like, prices and cost is increased steadily, whereas wages have remained stagnant. So, uh, clearly, it's not just about uh, the, the cost of labor. So, what's up with that? Why, have we, why don't we ever fucking question it in that regard? It literally still, like, cost of, of, of a burger goes up regardless. Cost of many things have gone up regardless of how much you pay the labor. And the answer should always be, so what? It's not going to go up by $10. People falsely assume that if wages increase by $10, then so does the burger. That's not how that works. I don't know why people literally think, like, we're going to pay $20 for a taco. Like, that's not how that works, you fucking idiot. It's not like a one-to-one. -one. Okay? That's not how it works. Just look at any other country where the minimum wage is significantly higher and how much they pay for burgles, and you will understand. I do not have a problem with a 30 cent increase. Especially if that means that uh, people's wages will increase tremendously. No offense, but sounds like you're about to cry when giving this take. What? Why? What? No, I'm, I'm not about to cry, but regardless, um, as I was saying, it's a, it's a very silly notion that um, it is going to be uh, completely unmanageable and that people are not going to be able to hey, pay. Listen, if you can't afford to pay your workers, your business model is failed. Why are these small business tyrants allowed to act like they own slaves? Yeah, I, that's the other counter to it, which is I like, what is the point in which it's uh, acceptable? Keep up the good to subjugate your your servants to wage slavery. Like, okay, well, my business will fail if I have to pay my workers more. Oh, damn, dude, that's crazy. I can't believe your business is going to fail because you priced in like near slave labor to your to your business model. Yes, I turned off the TTS. Okay, uh, I mean, 
I guess that we should justify slavery too then. You know? There's room and board that comes along with slavery. You could be a serf. Uh, and uh, at a time when tens of millions of people are working for starvation wages, uh, their theory is if you have low unemployment benefits, you can starve people back to work. And obviously, I, I think that that is unacceptable. I think one of the things that's happening is a lot of people right now are rethinking work and they're sick and tired of working for wages that are totally inadequate. And uh, that is why, by the way, we are moving aggressively to a reconciliation bill, which is going to create millions of good paying jobs, rebuilding America in many, many ways. So you, you, you segue to what I want to talk about in the reconciliation bill. A lot of back and forth on this. Um, there's, here's how I understand the state of play. There is going to be a reconciliation bill. Everyone agrees on that up to Joe Manchin, right? There's 50 Democrats ready for that and the president, Joe Biden. So is that, that, that part is clear, right? I, I'm right that there will be a reconciliation bill that moves this year. I expect that that is true. Okay. Um, what is in that bill, <laughs> the size of it, and whether whatever infrastructure compromise is ultimately signed only contingent on his passage are the things being fought over right now? Is that also right? Chris, one of the things that has bothered me in the last month or so is there's a lot of talk about numbers, six trillion, big number, a lot of talk about process. You know what there is not a lot of talk about? about the needs of working class Americans and what we have got to do. So the truth is that real wages in America today are lower than they were 48 years ago. The very, very rich are getting richer. And what some of us are saying is if we're going to retain the faith of the American people in their government, we're going to have to stand up for them and not just the big money interest. So let me just tell you what is going to be in this bill. First of all, you've got to deal with climate. Right now, the West Coast is you know, a flame in a sense. It's record-breaking heat wave, Australia, et cetera. We have got to deal with climate. And if we do not significantly invest in transforming our energy system, future generations will never forgive us. Today, Chris, we have the highest rate of childhood poverty. I think Bernie's being ridiculous, dude. I find it totally normal. And uh, as a matter of fact, awesome. And cool that uh, Portland is 135 degrees like it's fucking Arizona. No, it's, it's, a, it's a very normal thing that the Pacific Northwest now unironically feels like Texas. It's wild to see these changes happen right in front of our eyes in such an immediate and tangible way. Because one of the big problems with climate change is that it's not tangible like the the impact the devastating the most devastating impacts of climate change we're not supposed to see right now so you always offset uh you always can just kick the can down the road because you're like well it's not gonna happen to me it doesn't really matter or it's climate you know it's just like uncontrollable so <clears throat> it's kind of wild to actually see it with uh these irregular extreme weather conditions and cataclysmic events occurring with such high frequency in comparison to previous years with the weather changing so dramatically and so rapidly right in front of our fucking eyes and everyone's like yeah whatever yeah who cares eh, who cares fuck it Eh, who cares, dude? It's fine. It's all right. Uh, I ordered some more stuff. Yeah, I ordered Bang Energy Drink, actually. Yeah. From the PNW, felt like opening an oven yesterday. Of any major country on Earth. That is why we have to extend or make permanent the child tax credit. 300 bucks per child for working class families. Does anyone deny that our child care system 
is totally dysfunctional. We have got to deal with that. In the richest country on earth, you've got elderly people who have no teeth in their mouth because Medicare does not cover dental. We don't cover hearing aids. We don't cover eyeglasses. We have got to do that. We have got- I mean, we won't even do health care in this country. I've, I've given up on America almost completely at this point. Like, we won't even do health care coverage for our... We won't even do health care coverage for our, our citizens. So I, I don't know why we would even give a shit about climate change. In a lot of instances, climate change, uh, at the very least, like, targets uh, lower uh, people in, like, uh, worse economic conditions, right? Like, the, the immediate target is the immediate target is almost always like poor people. So that's one way that, uh, or that's one reason that people don't give a shit. It's like rich people can avoid it. I E, you know, Theodore Jebediah Cruz. Like when climate change hits or when, uh, extreme weather conditions cause blackouts in Texas, you could just go to Cancun. I can just go to Cancun and it don't matter to me. I'll go watch my porn Rooney in Cancun. Where it's like poor people are fucking suffering. So that's one reason why people don't really care about it as much. Because things that impact the poors, well, they're easier to avoid and cast aside. Or when you think about what's going on in Puerto Rico with a completely destroyed uh, infrastructure ripe for devastation in the immediate aftermath of a uh, climate disaster. Because people don't care. We've got to have universal pre-K. We have got to have a major housing bill because you got a half a million people who are sleeping out on the streets and 18 million households spending 50% of their limited incomes on housing. We've got to make higher education affordable. Those are the issues that are important to the American people, and that is why we need a major reconciliation bill to start addressing the crises facing ordinary Americans. So just, I, I know you don't want to talk process, and I, I, I understand that. I don't really love to anyway, but I just want to be clear on this. Like, those things are... Please, can you explain theocratic distributism? No, I don't know what the fuck theocratic distributism is, dude. What the fuck? What is that? Like, some sort of fucking... I don't even know what that is, dude. What? What is it? It's like Catholic socialism. Dude, people take like people literally just turn around and go like they they take a eight values test and they're like, "Oh, well I found this thing in here, so uh, in my eight values test. So let's, let's just, uh, let's just talk about this. I, I, I don't know. I, I guess it's like ecumenical Marxism kind of, I would assume. Is that what it is? Like Islamic communism or Catholic communism? You don't need to know all this stuff. Okay. Jesus Christ. No, it isn't. I don't know. I don't know what it is. I actually don't know what it is. Let's keep going. In you view as part of the reconciliation package that you would like that you want that to That is move, the reconciliation package. What do you think it is? Right. It is right. that and well, it I, is I, lowering I, the cost of <laughs> prescription drugs. It is progressive tax reform that says that maybe, just maybe, Jeff Bezos and other billionaires should start paying their fair share of taxes. That is what we are told. Well, then research it. No, you fucking idiot. I'm not going to research uh, a theocratic distributism. What the fuck? Shut up. Shut the fuck up, dumbass. I don't care. And you're fucking stupid for caring. How about that? I'm talking about and this is what the American people want. This is what we've got to do. 
Are you at all? I mean, I don't think I think between the what's happened in the wake of the great financial crisis, I think with interest rates, like I, I am the number one person who says deficits are not to be worried about. I know that this would be paid for largely with with tax increases. I guess. Is there some part of you that worries about a, a level of spending that is too much for the economy to basically deal with uh, in one fell swoop? Well, this is what I think. And I got to be honest with you and tell you, you know, we're still working on this. But as of now, we are assuming that we're going to pay for all of the new programs, paid family and medical leave, child care, housing, all of the ongoing programs by demanding that the wealthiest people and largest corporations start paying their fair share of taxes. But let me tell you, Chris, what I think most economists would agree with. And that is at a time when we have record breaking low interest rates, now is precisely the time to borrow and invest in one-time infrastructure projects. So that is kind of the premise that we're operating yeah. under. I mean, if it, we, we don't... I was, again, talking to my mom about this, the, the uh, Miami building collapse where 11 are dead, 150 are still accounted for and unaccounted for in the Miami building collapse. And this is some Turkish-ass shit right here, boys. I mean, this is actually Turkish shit. And Ken Klippenstein posted something that I also retweeted that triggered uh, the uh, actually mm, nerds on the internet about how uh, Ron Death Santis was uh, running a deregulation, uh, deregula mania or whatever the fuck. Around a similar time when this uh, collapse uh, happened, right? And people were saying, well, actually, that's about, like, deregulating licensing for nail salons. It has nothing to do with, mm, actually, mm, that has nothing to do with mm, 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 housing, mm, housing regulation. <laughs> and it's such a cowardly way. It's such a fucking cowardly way to get out of, of defending your positions. I'm pleased to announce our upcoming uh, Florida deregathon. The deregathon will take place on Thursday, January 31st in Valencia College to identify and eliminate burdensome government regulations that are hurting our businesses and stifling private sector competition. So, here's the problem. So is strawmanning and making fun of people with opposing views, Keg W. Here's the issue. While deregathon specifically might not have anything to do with like building code deregulation in the republican party and the second part of like what he's talking about identifying and eliminating burdens and government regulations that are hurting our businesses and stifling private sector competition is precisely at the heart of why the homeowners association didn't act quick enough or whoever like uh manages the condominium didn't act quick enough in Uh, in in uh, focusing on and immediately fixing some of these problems. Okay? And this is precisely what people love about Florida. Florida has uh, had massive booms and massive growth in apartments and apartment complexes. As I've talked about already, it's still ongoing. Uh, originally, it was cocaine in the 80s and 90s. Um, and that... That was uh, a, a massive reason for why uh, there were so many condos just being built like crazy. I mean, that same engineer that made this structure also made another apartment nearby in that exact same region. And that apartment hasn't uh, blown up. And part of the reason for why that apartment hasn't blown up is apparently that apartment has uh, a better maintenance than this one. And leaving it up to the individual rather than enforcing harsh regulatory checks led by local governments is precisely at the heart of why things like this happen you have to enforce homeowners and condominium owners to abide by certain checks that are going to make this process more expensive okay if you don't 
And if you leave it up to like random ass individuals in charge of managing a fucking uh, uh, condominium project like this, they are going to think about offsetting the costs as best as possible. Okay? 11 have definitely died so far in this uh, major structural damage. And 150 are not found uh, yet. And I don't know how many of those people will ever find. Problems get ignored in situations like this because it's too expensive to fix. And guess what? This is significantly more costly too. Yeah, maybe in the short term, not immediately fixing this. Uh, it, it not immediately fixing like structural damage uh, that would make sure that the foundation is stronger, make sure that the pipes are not corroded, make sure that the 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 uh, the steel beams underneath the 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 pool uh, are not getting damaged as a consequence of not having like the appropriate overflow for the pool or whatever the fuck happened uh, over the course of uh, uh, you know many years. might actually help you save money in the short term, but now you fucked up. Now you have no life, okay? Now you died. In the long term, that's probably way more costly too. And it's horrible. The people that live, the people that live in properties like this, in condos like this, also are the very same ones that oftentimes agree with the deregulation. Because many of you are thinking that this was a condo that was uh, like uh, for rent. It's not. These were people who owned, a lot of those people owned their own condos. So a lot of these people had at least somewhat of a say. I think a lot of the residents actually were complaining from what I understand about the condominium, uh, about the building and the many issues. And I'm sure there were still people that were renting, of course. But ultimately, these decisions should not be left to random people who want to put short-term profit or, uh, or, or push back costs. So homeowners deserve it? No, absolutely not. My point is there should be more government involvement in these sorts of things, but places like Florida and in most places, actually, as a matter of fact, realtors, Real estate developers and homeowners run the fucking country or run their local governments. They run everything. What they want goes. That's the reason why we still have a massive homelessness problem in many parts of the country. That makes homeownership more and more expensive and it prices out so many people that creates more uh, homelessness. And the solution to that is public housing, but public housing would greatly, uh, would greatly lower prices for the homes that currently exist. So that's, if you're looking at home ownership, not from the point of view of like personal property, but rather as a, as a, uh, uh, investment. And many people do. You're always going to be against social housing. You're always going to be against public housing because you don't want your investment to depreciate. What did I tell you guys about the New York mayoral race? 
it does not matter who becomes the mayor of New York because New York is run by, whether it's Bill de Blasio, who is the most progressive mayor in recent history and probably will be the most progressive mayor of New York, who even said at a certain point in his life that he was a democratic socialist. Lol. It doesn't matter who's the fucking mayor, whether it's Rudy Giuliani, Malcolm Bloomberg, or uh, Bill de Blasio. Because the real mayor of New York, or the real local government there, is real estate developers, Wall Street, corporations, and, the, uh, and business interests. That's who runs New York City. Just like the ad breaks run the stream. At the top of the hour, every hour, there's a 60-second ad break. Okay, and uh, a lot of you wait for those segues to come. And sometimes they never do, and other times they do come. But they come regardless. And if you no longer want to see said ads, well, you can do a thing. You can do a couple things. You can subscribe, whether it's for $5 or for free. With the Twitch Prime, you can subscribe for free. You use it here. You'll no longer see the ads. Or you can use an ad block or a VPN. Here's the ad break now. I'm going to come. Homeowners in a condo only own the space between the main walls and the structure of the building. So ultimately, the responsibility of checking the structural integrity falls 100% on the building owner, not the residents. Though the residents can certainly put pressure on the owners to take necessary steps to have third parties check for issues. They did. They did do that. A lot of news we want to get to this morning, starting with the latest on that deadly building collapse in Florida. Overnight, hundreds of people gathering for this candlelight vigil. Another emotional night there, and here's what we know right now. 11 people are confirmed dead, 150 people still unaccounted for. And this morning, we're learning more about the possible warning signs before that collapse. ABC's Victor Okendo has been on the scene from the start of this story and joins us now from Surfside, Florida with the latest. Good morning, Victor. Good morning, Michael. We are now into day six of the urgent search and rescue operation here. There are so many questions about how this could have happened. Families still desperate for word on their loved ones as we continue hearing these incredible stories of survival. This morning, officials holding on to hope, insisting that the search for the 150 people missing in the Surfside condo collapse is still a rescue mission, not a... At least this will maybe get... In a very weird and dark way, Maybe this will kick some people's asses that own condos into like actually taking the necessary precautions. You know what I mean? Like the reasonable fear that they uh, now have could potentially lead them to force their management companies to, uh, to take action. Because I know that there were residents that brought issues up I know that there were residents there that said that uh, the building is in a state of disarray and there needs to be improvements done. And uh, they, those fell on deaf ears, unfortunately. Terrifying. Recovery. Our top priority continues to be search and rescue and saving any lives that we can. This as the death toll climbed to 11, three more victims identified. Overnight, hundreds attending a vigil for the dead and missing on a nearby beach. Now more than 300 rescue crews racing against the clock to try to find those still missing, battling treacherous conditions, one worker falling 25 feet down the rubble. It's not an issue of we could just attach a couple of uh, cords to a uh, concrete boulder and lift it and call it a day. Crews hopeful that as the building pancaked down, Pockets of air or voids could have formed in the rubble, potentially trapping survivors, keeping them alive. There are certain areas that we have not gotten to, but we've been able to place cameras that seem to have large enough spaces, voids, that occupants may still be in there. Rescuers finding some of those voids, but unfortunately, nobody inside so far. Michael Noriega's grandmother has not been found, but two of her treasured family photos were just feet from the site and that gives him hope. We want to stand in the gap in the middle for so many people that were directly or indirectly affected by this uh, to give them hope that they're not alone. This as stories of survival come to light from that horrific night. What unit were you in? 705. If I'm in 704, I'm dead.
Steve Rosenthal was asleep in his apartment when the building started collapsing. He remembers his neighbor's cries for help. People were yelling, help me, help me, get me out. He's filed a- I feel like they're taking too long to find survivors. Dude, that's an insane take, okay? Do you know how difficult this is when a building like this collapses, when a building pancakes? Or maybe you don't know, uh, so I'll just, I'll I I explain it to you. When a building like this collapses, it's not as simple as like, oh yeah, let's drill in and like find people. You can't do that because they currently, the only thing keeping people, 150 people alive, theoretically, is potential pockets where like a steel beam uh, uh, helped, you know, uh, a steel beam like created an area where they could have technically survived. Okay. There's a little air pocket. It, it basically, uh, you know, the, the roof caved in, but a steel beam is like holding it up like a little baby area. If someone got very, very lucky. Okay. It's basically like deadly Jenga. If you were to immediately drill in, you could be drilling into a person. If you were to slowly but surely remove certain parts of the debris, then you could be reshifting the weight so that those tiny pockets can no longer hold or withstand the actual, uh, you know, uh, the, the, the actual pressure and cave in on top of someone who might be alive down there still. So they can just die of dehydration in the meanwhile. There's also the other problem of sending people in there. There is no, there is no foundation. There is no structural integrity. When you send workers in there, when you send firefighters in there, they're already inhaling a fuckload of debris, which will cause a, a, a tremendous amount of uh, long-term complications like cancer, things like that. But even before that, you're, you're sending them into... Uh, an area where there's no structural integrity and it could potentially fall on top of them and kill them. Lawsuit against the condo association. 88 year old Esther Gorfinkel, also lucky to be alive, escaping from her fifth floor apartment, rescued by a group of neighbors. They picked me up, carried me on my, on his back outside and I saw the sky. I know I will be out. The investigation now trying to determine what could have caused this horrifying collapse. Why do you waste your breath on these brain dead chatters? Maybe they don't know. I think some of them uh, come in with like honest intentions where they feel emotional. And that they just maybe don't recognize it. Don't the Miami Herald it. publishing photos from a contractor taken just 36 hours before the tragedy. The contractor telling the paper there was standing water all over the parking garage, noting cracked concrete and severely corroded rebar under the pool. And overnight, the Wall Street Journal publishing a letter it says was sent by the condo board's president in April, warning that significant repairs were needed and that the building had deteriorated since that 2018 report, saying indeed the observable damage, such as in the garage, has gotten significantly worse since the initial inspection. When you can visually see the concrete spalling cracking, that means the rebar holding it together is rusting and deteriorating beneath the surface. Now, engineers looking at this disturbing video, frame by frame, showing the collapse. When I look at the video, I feel it looks like it starts from the bottom of the building and works its way up, or a failure concentrated at the uh, supporter of the bottom of the building. A structural engineer who studied the 9-11 Pentagon attack has been hired by the city of Surfside to inspect the collapse, but this will be a very long process. That pile of rubble is also evidence and it will be transported to a warehouse for inspection. But keep in mind, the focus right now, the priority is on search and rescue. Michael? Absolutely there, Victor. And Victor, what are, what are you hearing about the sister buildings? Michael, that same engineer. So yeah, that same engineer in the 80s also made another building in the same region that I just mentioned has also taken a look at the sister buildings, the north and the east towers, and he told us that there was nothing that he saw that showed him that they were in imminent danger of collapse. No mandatory evacuations have been ordered, but some residents have chosen to leave on their own. Michael? All right, Victor Kendo, thank you so much. Well, hey there, G And of course, 
our main man, Ben Shabibo. I had 10 took on the Ollie London uh, saga, the Ollie London case. Ollie London is a, a, a sick freak who uh, wanted to be Jimin and said that they were Jimin, uh, is a British rich kid and a reality TV uh, psycho who now has decided that the very same people that if he is uh, genuine uh, with uh, their claim of being non-binary and their pronouns, their preferred pronouns are Ko and Rian for the record. So before you fucking yell at me about like, you know, right? And Jim, is it Jin Min? I don't know how you say it. Jim Min is pulling off a Rachel Dolezal specifically so they can get a little bit of clout from the reactionary right in the United States of America. They are exactly what conservatives talk about when they uh, say, uh, what if someone was faking that they're being trans? Like, that's why we can't have this. Like, this person is, whether they're genuinely non-binary or not, I don't know, but this person is absolutely faking, like, being Korean and 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 bastardizing the trans experience specifically so that reactionaries can use them as a talking point to say see we were right when you can't find someone who's like a trans trender you go and you make your own It's like Rachel Dolezal, except Rachel Dolezal, he's like work with the ND, NAACP. You know what I'm saying? Identifies Korean. That's just my culture. That's my home country. That's exactly how I look now. I but people are very this. angry at Ali London. What's making you so mad, bro? Hmm? Hmm? Bigotry? Ali London. Oh my God. He changed his fucking, he changed his fucking editors. Like he's just doing this shit now. It's so... Ah, okay, I gotta pee. Fuck. Is just as Korean as Caitlyn Jenner is a woman. Just as Korean. Big news coming out of Britain. I think groundbreaking news. A British influencer named Ali London is uh, a non-binary person. They have identified as non-binary. But not only that, Ali London, because Ali London is a fan of apparently something called K-pop. I will admit that I was not informed on this particular trend. It is Korean pop. Ali London is a big fan of a particular Korean pop star named Park Jimin and uh, decided to have $150,000 worth of plastic surgery in order to quote unquote look more Korean. And now Ali London identifies as trans Korean. Here's Ali London explaining their, his new identity. Or anyone online as British because I, I identify as Korean. That's just my culture. That's my home country. That's exactly how I look now. Um, and I also identify as Jimmy and that's my Korean name. But uh, not only that, I just, I know it's a little bit confusing for some people. Nobody's ever come out as Jimmy or Korean. But um, this is something that you guys know if you've followed my journey for the last eight years. I've really struggled with identity issues with who I am. Trans Koreans are Koreans. So basically, I covered this last week where I talked about uh, how this person was absolutely just using this as an opportunity to get like a little bit of clout, okay? And it's clear that that's what's going on so that right-wing reactionaries could uh, hop onto this and be like, trans people are silly, trans people are ridiculous. Look, this person is like obviously not Korean, but uh, they're claiming that they're Korean. Look at how crazy this person is. Look at how much of a freak this person is. To then turn around and literally say, like, this represents all trans people. Okay? And uh, they don't care about giving this person clout. I don't understand how you can turn around and, uh, I don't know, uh, seek shelter, I guess, or seek clout from an audience of people who literally want you to be euthanized. I, I, don't, I don't get it. Because the reality is, like, this person and his followers think you are a freak. 
Okay? They want you to be murdered. They want you to be euthanized. So it's wild that uh, you would turn around and, and uh, seek refuge with them for a crumb of clout. You missed it, but Shabiba already said Ollie is as Karina as Caitlyn Jenner as a woman. Hella transphobic out the gate. Yeah, oh, for sure. I already know. Here is one thing Ollie London could have done if they genuinely wanted to be Korean. Learn the language. Live there for a couple years and then apply for citizenship. But Ali London didn't do any of that. Okay? You call them a freak too? Yeah, he is a freak. They are a freak. Okay? They are a freak. They are a freak because anyone who seeks shelter with the Republican Party, if they are legitimately non-binary, whether they're legitimately non-binary or not, it doesn't even matter. They're a freak regardless because they think that they're fucking Jimin. Okay? Like, that's, that's why they're freaks. If you think you are a, a, a BTS fan to the degree where you're, like, literally, like, I am this person. I identify as this person. You're a freak. It's not about being non-binary. It's about being a different person and literally trying to wear uh, their face. Okay? And I don't know why people have this immediate notion to be like, well, every experience is valid. That will be used against you to actually shit on well-documented and legitimate valid experiences by the likes of people like Ollie London and the conservatives who will use that. Calling them a freak is a bit odd, sorry. No, the fuck it's not, dude. If you're literally getting plastic surgery to be Jim in, you're a fucking freak. It has nothing to do with being non-binary. It is a completely separate concept. If you can't fit that in your fucking brain, I don't know what to tell you. Okay? And by the way, there are a billion fucking cis people that are freaks too. And there are trans people who are freaks as well. Not because they're trans, but because they have freak-like fucking points of view on the planet. Okay? It has nothing to do with being trans. It has nothing to do with being non-binary. And everything to do with literally getting plastic surgery to the tune of hundreds of thousands of fucking dollars to look like Jimin and claim you are a human being that exists on this planet. Okay? Sorry. But go off. There are a lot of leftists who come from a place of empathy that get duped. Okay? Don't be like those leftists who feel, who get fucking duped by people like this. And they're, they're like not even hiding it. They're literally like, I am going to fuck you over by adding Ben Shapiro and Tucker Carlson and Sean Hannity. And I am going to become a person that they can weaponize against you if you're a trans person. Okay. And you're out here literally like, no, sorry. Uh, it's a little fucked up that you're doing this. Jesus Christ. Let me put it again. Trans Koreans are Koreans. Okay? And if I say it over and over, it becomes true. Now, you're going to have to explain to me why Ali London is not a Korean. Really, and if you say things like, well, Ali London has never been Korean. Yes, but trans women are not women. I mean, not, not a single trans woman has ever been a woman. Not one. 
And if you say, well, you know, Ali London doesn't even have any of the characteristics of being a Korean absent surgery. I will say to you, neither does a trans woman. And if you say to me that Ali London has never gone through the experience of actually being Korean, didn't grow up Korean, I'll say neither has a trans woman. There are zero distinctions, none between being trans Korean and being a trans person of another sex. None. In fact, the only distinctions cut in favor of being transracial rather than transsexual. You can more easily shift your race, which is, in fact, a fluid concept. See, this is why this shit sucks. You understand? I mean, you already understand this, especially if you're a trans person. You already understand that this is like. This is a, a project to be created to weaponize against. Uh, your entire existence as though there is not enough like discrimination already occurring. OK. <sighs> There's a difference between your race and your gender. This distinction, regardless of what people think, is obvious that's precisely why gender is a social construct okay it's all the different working parts that tie into our comprehension of what your gender is there are there's a social construct that surrounds race as well for sure i get it But someone who has made the legitimate uh, effort to uh, become a Korean national or a Korean person is entirely different than someone who's like, I'm a Korean person now because I got eye surgery. Like there is no, there is no dysphoria for race. Okay. That's also the same reason why we disregard people who feel as, uh, as though they are like animals and stuff. Okay. Now I know that there is, as far as not a requirement as a trans medicalist opinion, I know it's not a requirement, but there is no way you can make this fucking argument, dude. Would you like to make this argument? Then go ahead. I, I want to have like, this destroys, here, you want to know what it is? You want to know why this is like really fucking annoying to me? Because this literally, unfortunately, if you're looking for me to like absolutely obliterate this point of view, I can't because people like this literally destroy this argument. And people like you in the chat who fucking turn around and advocate for uh, certain things, Literally also help this argument craft. You get that, right? And I don't think you get that. I, I don't think you understand that. I, I think you want everything to be valid and want everything to, to be considered to be... Like, you want everything to be... A, a, a valid concept and if that is your if that's your fucking point of view then yeah people like ollie london are going to shatter that and just because dysphoria is not a requirement to be trans does not mean that like it is a legitimate thing that has been well documented throughout time okay and makes up a pretty sizable chunk of trans people's existences that doesn't make you a trans medicalist to recognize that. Okay? Aren't you making a bad argument? Then if it can be destroyed by this? There is no there is no good argument against it, unfortunately. 
if you believe that, like, every experience and everything is fucking valid, if you believe that every experience is fucking valid, unconditionally, then you have to, you have to acknowledge that Ollie London has neo pronouns Ko and Rian, and they're actually a Korean person, and maybe even Jimin. Okay? But that person is not playing in good faith. They're not like saying this is legitimate and this is actual. This is real. Do you get it? But you don't. You don't operate that way. And if you do, you're fucking crazy. I'm sorry. If you literally think that like this person is unironically fucking Korean now and also their, their, uh, their, their neo pronouns are Ko and Rian. And that they're actually a Korean person, and that is similar to the trans experience, then you are playing into the fucking meme. They are not actually Korean, but they still deserve to be respected in their identity as a non binary person. Yeah, which is why I'm using they, them pronouns. Like, I'm not going to, I'm not going to be, like, reactionary and be like, oh, it doesn't fucking matter. It doesn't matter. Like, I, I think that they're just looking for attention. I mean, they've shown that they're looking for attention. And I know that a lot of people get triggered by this because they're like, a lot of people claim non-binary people are looking for attention and that's why they're doing it. Well, this person is literally looking for attention. Okay. Wait, are people taking this seriously or is it just bait? I don't know. I don't know. I feel like there's fucking weirdo like leftists in my audience that do get like that do get hypersensitive because I said that this is kind of similar to thinking that you're uh, an animal or something. And unfortunately, things like that, I think uh, otherwise dilute and gender is already complicated as it is, but it, this like otherwise dilutes a a a uh, clear and coherent argument that you could launch towards uh, gender and uh, the trans existence. Who are you to tell if they're looking for attention or not? Why not let them identify as Korean if it makes you happy? It's completely subjective and they can be Korean if they want to be. See, this is what I mean. It's like, I mean, this person is, this person literally is just like, like they're baiting, right? They're, they're, they're just saying shit like this specifically so that they can like anger me into another stun lock. Okay. It's bait. And if you come in here and you're like, we have to acknowledge, uh, we have to acknowledge their, uh, uh, uh pronouns of being of Ko and Rian. Like, I guess I'm too transphobic. Uh, I'm too old and therefore transphobic. If that's like where we're at. So I'll, I'll just be honest with you as someone who advocates for trans rights, I don't understand it. And it fucking, it's like, it literally does not fit in my brain. Okay. Sorry. Would this be considered cultural appropriation? I don't know what the fuck this is.
Are these same people okay with Rachel Dolezal? No, of course not. I mean, I love Rachel Dolezal. She's my queen. People who transition, trans <laughs> wait, you think gynecologists think gender is a social construct? You think trans women that have gotten bottom surgery don't go to a fucking gyno? You fucking idiot. Like, what, what do you think? They're just like, you think they are, what, what do they do? Do they have a pussy now? What, what are they going to do? Sorry, can't go to the gyno. I'm, I'm trans. <laughs> they don't Hassan LMAO. Trans women that got bottom surgery that have pussies now don't go to the gyno. They, they just don't go to the doctor. Incredible, brilliant take. I mean, Chad is just losing their minds now. They're doing surgical blackface. Uh, I wonder why. 100% of the people who are supporting transracial aren't trans. Yeah, exactly. I don't think they do because it's not biologically the same thing. It's just skin, not an actual vagina. That's crazy because you don't have a pussy. And I got trans people in here who do have pussies. So what's up? Like, they tell me that they're going to the gyno. You, on the other hand, are some fucking delusional cishet dude. Who's like, nah, they don't actually go, dog. I know. Like, why? Why say it if you have no fucking idea how this works? And no, it's not just skin, you fucking idiot. Like, it's skin in the same sense that, like, just a cis person's pussy is, is just skin. Everything is just skin. This is why trans people say, like, cis people should just shut the fuck up and, and not get involved in this. It's like, it kind of is true. You just don't know. Like, you could learn, maybe have a more informed opinion, but half the time, it's literally just uninformed opinions. Oftentimes rooted within just a deep bigotry of uh, trans people. Right? Race is a social construct, apparently. If race is a social construct, you should be able to fluidly shift between them between the races, far more easily than sex, which is a biological concept, deeply ingrained and rooted. So if you say trans women are women- I love this because like, Ben doesn't think race is a social construct and Ben doesn't think sex is a social, or not sex, but gender is a social construct. But for this argument, for the sake of this argument, he's like making it seem like he does believe in it just so he can fucking uh, devalue uh, trans people. Okay? You don't inherit your gender from your fucking parents in the same way that like your race is tied to your genes and to your parents and you are born a specific race. The social applications that uh, we have revolving around race the social construct of race revolves around the exclusion of non-whites, for example, like the one drop rule or the different ways that we have historically and still to this day oppress specific races. Transracial is a thing. I invented it. It 
If you can be transgender, you can be transracial. Live your life to the fullest. Be who you want to be and spread love. Hashtag Ollie London. Like, this person's getting, like, 10 fucking retweets, dude. They're not even doing a good enough job. Because the people that they're trying to get fucking uh, uh, clout from despise them. Like, they want them to be... Those people want them to be murdered. You know what I mean? Women. And if you say that everybody's a bigot, if you refuse to acknowledge that trans women are women, because they're not, then uh, you need to tell me right now. Explain to me that if Ali London had a bunch of surgeries to appear like a woman, or more like a woman, and then said, I am a woman, you there are definitely ultra woke people that identify this way. I know a few that say they respond to the attack helicopter meme should just be the respect the per per person's attack helicopter identity. Yeah, extremely online weirdos, dude. Okay. Yeah, that's insane. Sorry. Like, you're not a fucking attack helicopter. And Ollie London is not Korean. You can find people that, I mean, there's, there are now uh, maps, you know, minor attracted person uh, shit. Does that make it right? No. So who gives a fuck that there are people? Yeah, they're crazy. Shut the fuck up. You would all be cheering the bravery. So brave. So wonderful. So, so non-stereotypical. So just, it's not playing on stereotypes. It's not reducing femininity to a bunch of surgeries and gender dysphoria. It's super interesting where different generations, uh, progressives draw the line on trans rights. I mean, what, what is the right? Like, what is the trans right that uh, I'm overstepping? I, I, need, I need someone to describe to me how I'm overstepping a, a, a trans right when I say, like, Ollie London isn't fucking Korean. Like, they're just wilding out and doing it specifically to hurt trans people. Like, that transracial things are not, it's not real to be transracial. You know? They're not even a fucking Korean national, nor do they know Korean. Man, there's a whole rabbit hole of adult maps that identify as being underage. Obviously, really super online cringe shit, but I've seen it on Twitter. That's what I'm saying. They, yes, dude. Yes. I'm sorry. I'm going to use like really fucking aggressive terms here. But some people have fucking mental health problems that either go unaddressed or rather they just lean into it. Okay. That's it. You don't have to look deeper into it to be like, oh, I wonder what's going on here. This must be a valid identity or a valid reason to feel this way. Like, no. And I know that people look at that and go, well, that's a slippery slope argument that you can extend the trans existence. And I don't. I don't think that you can do that. And I'm not doing that. Okay? I don't. Gender identity is your social gender. You embody the social role of that gender. Biological gender is just your genetic X, Y, X, 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 et cetera combo. Yeah. Yeah, transracial is a real thing, but it's not the thing that these guys claim it is. It's something which applies to adoptions. For example, an Asian child with black parents will have stronger racial experience than that of, uh, uh, of their parents. Yeah, I, I understand that. It surprises me how you can say that this person cannot be Korean, but he can say that he has no gender. First of all, if you recognize that they're non-binary, you don't say he, you say they. Secondly, like in the real world, there are going to be people who go to the extent to absolutely bastardize certain concepts for personal gain and clout. That does not make up the overwhelming majority of 
that does not make up the overwhelming majority of the the trans experience in the same way that like conservatives will imply it does to devalue trans people and uh, make it seem like they're uh, faking it for attention or faking it because they want to win like fucking weightlifting competitions as though like that's uh, a, a a good enough reason to literally get fucking obliterated in every other part of your lives like because we make trans existence a living hell for trans people um but ultimately you just have to recognize that some people are just fucking bad faith I guess the place I draw the line is like when you claim you're a different race than you actually are or when you claim that you're a different species than you actually are. Okay? That's it. That's where I draw the that's where I draw the fucking line. And age too. You can't like think you're a different age. I mean, there's a bunch of shit that you just understand. It's disrespectful to trans people to draw the line where transphobes say we get to. What? Their pronouns are also Corey, and I find it funny that leftists feel the need to defend this. Yeah, I don't understand neo pronouns. I don't get it. Uh, I, I I hit everybody with the they them. Okay, I'm a, I'm a Joe Biden, uh, Andy on that on that end. Okay, I know that this is a big point of contention for uh the the Minecraft stand Twitter crowd. Like when people are like, I'm fae or fairy, or I think that's the thing that people will say and they identify as like being a fairy or something. I don't get it. I'm too fucking old, man. Okay. I just, I, I don't understand it. But I also don't understand why like people say that, you know, People discriminate against you when you, uh, uh, when, when people don't use neo pronouns. Like I, I don't, I, I legitimately don't understand it. Like me, me saying, uh, that like me saying that Ko and Rian are not valid pronouns for, uh, for Ollie London. Like, I don't know how that discriminates against them. Or me saying that they're not actually fucking Korean. I also don't fully understand how to fucking do neo pronouns. Like, how do I... Do I just say fey when I'm referencing a person? I just wish that there were no fucking gender pronouns in the English language. Especially because, like, I learned... I had to learn gender pronouns when I learned English coming from a, uh, a Turkish uh, background where we don't have any gender pronouns in the Turkish language. And then I had to learn this shit. And now people are like, actually, there's a lot more that you need to learn. Gender identity has an actual scientific basis that is being studied. I guess that's where you could draw the line. Yeah. But I also feel like most people that, uh, most people that use, uh, neo pronouns don't stress being called they, them, you know what I mean? Like I've never had someone be like, how dare you not call me Faye and, uh, regard me as they, them. So it's like, okay, it takes two seconds to ask someone what their preferred pronoun is. Not that hard. No, that's not the hard part. How are you failing to recognize this? I don't know how to use Fay or Z or Zer. Like, that's what I'm saying. I don't know how to, like, point to someone and be like, oh, Zer is just being uh, crazy right now or something. Do, do you get what I'm saying? 
the same way other pronouns I've seen people with pog pog self in their card. Oh, Jesus Christ. Okay, cool. Go off. Please don't get mad at me when I use they, them. Are you uncomfortable when you're talking about this stuff at some point? I don't know what's going on anymore. I mean, I'm a little uncomfortable because like, I don't want to make people feel shitty about themselves. But I also don't get it. You're saying this person got together with Republicans and was like, how can we own the left? Decided on this and then proceeded to go through all these surgeries to achieve it? No, I think that person already had like a lot of issues, right? You literally just replaced the words in a sentence. He, him, his is Z, Zim, Zer are analogous. Okay, but it's not just Z, Zim, Zer. And even then it's like, I don't know what the fuck's going on there, but it's not just that. Okay, how do you, how do you use Pog and Pog self? How do you use Cohen Rian? <laughs> Neo pronoun discourse is so useless, just move on. I usually. This is the reason why I don't talk about it. This is the reason why I don't get it. Or get into neo pronouns cuz uh it's it's like it's too complicated, too convoluted. And from what I understand, most people don't get mad if you just use they them. They went to the bar and grabbed face elves drink. <laughs> okay. Uh, imagine hearing this conversation like 20 years ago yeah those aren't the same as actual neo pronouns what they get the fuck out of here you're you're literally lying that's no no wait wait who decides is there a council is there like a queer council to get together and they're like okay these are the acceptable neo pronouns and these are not the acceptable neo pronouns now you're just fucking gatekeeping how about that that's the point. That's why that's you're you're personally opening up the floodgates. To me, it feels like shifting. Okay. It's like, you're not shifting. You're just daydreaming or uh, saying that like everything is gaslighting. You're not gaslighting every all the time. You're, you could just be an asshole. Who's just fucking lying. Okay. Like I'm suffering from trauma. No, you just, you're, you're displeased. You know what I mean? For you? No, 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 no. It, he would be a woman now. But if he identifies as Korean, absolutely not. Wrong. Can't do it. And so I say to you, during Pride Month, okay, it is Pride Month. Live your truth, Ollie. Live your truth. Ali London is just as Korean as Caitlyn Jenner is a woman. Just as Korean as Caitlyn Jenner is a woman. Now you may say, well, Ali London is just a performance artist. It's, just, it's all, that doesn't matter. You don't get to invade Ali London's truth. You don't get to tell Ali London what they are. By the way, Ali London has now declared their pronouns. Ali London's pronouns, it should be noted, are now they, them, core, E-N. I'm not kidding you. Those are the those are the pronouns. And I've been told that there are many different types of pronouns by no less a source than the New York Times that people have been using neo pronouns. So there really is no problem here. And in fact, if you don't like this, you are a bigot. So apparently, Ali London then uploaded a flag of South Korea LGBT in Pride. 
and said, yes, I identify as Korean. Yes, I'm non-binary. Yes, I look like Jimin. But none of us, none of this should be a reason to outcast me from society, to dehumanize. I, like, once you have accidentally correctly gendered a trans woman, it's over. Every argument goes back to that. Okay, boys? Here it is. Here it is. Okay, and I'm using the gender neutral boys here. Ben Shapiro has correctly gendered Caitlyn Jenner in the past and has stopped himself and then literally turned around and misgendered Caitlyn Jenner deliberately because he does it out of pure malice. He does it because he's a grifter. Okay? That is the truth. So once you do that, you lose your I'm transphobic card. Okay? Sorry. When you, or you lose the argument to ever, ever talk about uh, a gender beyond like a social construct. That's it. Straight up. If you ever get caught correctly gendering a trans person and then stop yourself and then literally misgender them. And there is a video of this. If you want, I'm sure someone in the chat can send me the link. Well, the moment you do that, you give the game away. Okay. That's it. I have to think, I'm pissed off about this story because now I have to think more about fucking race being a social construct and gender being a social construct and, uh, and, and how these things are, are uh, different from one another. One. And it just fucking frustrates me because it's just dumb, okay? Some things are just stupid. Some things just click and some things don't, okay? And from, uh, it's like a I'll know it when I see it type beat. Orange is the new black. I never watched that show. I've never watched oh, transgender a woman from uh, Orange is the New Black. I never watched that show. I've never watched that show either, but she's on the cover of Time Magazine. Oh. Or he's on the cover of Time Magazine. That's it. That's it. It's over. It's a wrap. It's GG's. I've never watched that show. You literally correctly gendered a trans woman and then stopped yourself and said he. It's done. You're doing it on purpose. And it's, it's, a, perfect, it's a perfect clip. Why is it a perfect clip? Because it betrays the values that Ben supposedly has. Okay? That's it. You recognize that that person is a woman. That person identifies as a woman. And you literally would never point to them and be like, can you get my bag from him? If the, the uh, trans star on Orange is the New Black is out in the real world, okay, and she's sitting at a cafe, and she has your bag, and you point to a random person, you would never, in the, Laverne Cox, thank you, in Ben Shapibo's world, he makes it seem like he would say, can you get my bag from him, pointing to a, a, a trans woman. But you would never do that. You just would not do that. You wouldn't. So use that energy to recognize how, uh, you know, uh, how, how you associate certain things with gender. So that's all you have to say after watching that trans Korean video, classic deflecting tactics. Dude, everything he said in this video is true. Shut the fuck up. Okay, I'm just going to ban trolls. I think I went through it already. Korean as a nationality is something you can get if you actually become a Korean national. Okay? The scientific implications of your race, albeit uh, minor differences, that have uh, uh, larger uh, differences in your appearance, but just minor uh, genetic differences overall, are passed down to you from your parents in a way that Gender as a social construct is not. There are socialized elements of race, the way we treat certain races, the way we understand certain races that are uh, socially learned. Same with, uh, same with gender. But ultimately, you can't just change your race and be like, I'm a different race now.
Koreans aren't a race, so that destroys their whole transracial argument. Yeah, I mean, well, they could say that they identify as Asian, okay? I know, there's another JCS out there as well. Okay. Ultimately, that per this person is, is wild. I mean, they're crazy. Not because they're non-binary. They're crazy because they fucking think they're someone else. Like, and that's not valid. It's just not. You can, you can see the difference between an invalid uh, existence and someone who's doing it specifically for grift and someone who's not. It's so hard to defend people nowadays because of this. I try to understand it, but it truly doesn't make sense. It doesn't. me and shame me for being who I am, a non-binary Korean person. London's manager says that London, quote, felt strongly attached to Korea and the Korean culture and feels much more connected to this than his own culture. But people are very angry at Ali London. You bigot. So, so connected to Korean culture, yet like literally doesn't even know how to speak uh, the language. I don't understand why you're mad. Why are you mad? What's making you so mad, bro? Hmm? Hmm? Bigotry? I sense bigotry. In Doesn't even speak the language. Literally a year ago was saying, I'm not Korean. I'm not Korean. I just want to look like Jimin. Now he's full blown saying, I am Korean and adding a bunch of reactionary Republicans specifically to join the cause and advocate for him to bastardize trans existence. Yeah, go ahead. In fact, as Ali London, their self now says, quote, how come all the woke mob will devote all Says a lot about Ben that like they're correctly, uh, uh, using the right pronouns of a person only when they agree with them, by the way. It's great. Put all their time to threatening and bullying me for being non-binary, but won't speak out against human rights abuses in China. How come woke are silent on China's concentration camps, clamp down on democracy in Hong Kong or oppression in Tibet? Not a terrible. Question, Ali London. Ali London also writes, I'm calling out the woke mob. These are the people that always preach about liberalism, tolerance, and respecting others, but are, some, are the same people sending me thousands of death threats, telling me to take my own life, and bullying me because they don't agree with who I am. Maybe this is how we get reactionaries to believe in trans people. I don't know. Just have, like, fucking... To have, uh... You know, have a bunch of these fucking psychotic grifters come out so that uh, reactionary propagandists can, like... Act like they believe it. Here, I'm going to run this video here. Okay. This is the new QAnon uh, conspiracy that just dropped. I don't know why it looks like Vaseline was all over the, was, was stabbed all over the lens here, but a lot it's of very good. That, that, you know, shows, that points to that this wasn't a just spontaneous event. And if John McAfee, it, let's just talk about him now, if this is true. Um, first of all, someone important was in that building that they didn't want there. We know how the deep state operates. It's not a conspiracy theory. It's true because it's proven true over and over again. They're dirty, they're satanic, and they're disgusting, and they will do everything to wield power, everything that they can to get whoever that they need silenced or to get information uh, silenced. So some, some information, some bombshell or some person was in that building or group of people that they don't want around anymore. I believe that this is a deep state operation. There's a lot of evidence that, that you know, shows, that points to that this wasn't a just spontaneous event. And if John McAfee, it, let's just talk about him now, if this is true. Um, first of all, someone important was in that building that they didn't want there. We know how the deep state operates. It's not a conspiracy theory. It's true because it's proven true over and over again. They're dirty. They're satanic and they're disgusting and they will do everything to wield power, everything that they can to get whoever that they need silenced or to get information uh, silenced. So some, some information, some bombshell 
or some person was in that building or group of people that they don't want around anymore. I believe that this is a deep state operation. There's a lot of evidence that, that you know, shows, that points to that this wasn't a just spontaneous event. And if John McAfee, it, let's just talk about him now, if this is true. Um, first of all, some... I love that this replayed a bunch of times, so now you guys uh, are, are brainwashed into believing it. That was a loop, yes. Someone the deep state is here, boys. important was in that building that they Let's didn't run want it one there. More we time. know how the deep state operates. It's not a conspiracy theory. It's true because it's proven true over and over again. They're dirty, they're satanic, and they're disgusting, and they will do everything to wield power, everything that they Why can get so excited? to get whoever that they need. Silent. Why does he do that? Does he know that the top of the hour ad break is here? And he's saying, stop. Top of the hour ad break is here, Hassan. There's a 60 second ad break that you're about to run. Don't forget it. Now, of course, if you no longer want to see the ads, you already know what to do, Hassan. Tell them. You can avoid the ads by subscribing, either with a $5 subscription or with a free one. By connecting your Amazon Prime account to your Twitch account and getting one free Prime subscription that you can use on your favorite broadcaster. Or you can use an ad block. Or a VPN. But here's the ad break now. Boom. Do you think it's a modern day satanic panic? Uh, I don't even know what this is. I think these people are just fucking nuts. Uh, speaking of nuts people. Enemies. I think in regards to the athlete protesting, I I've spent the last year and a half uh, hearing every argument possible and understanding. Bro, what, are, what is Megan McCain's hairstyle is doing? Like, what's the, why... Why is she doing him dirty like this? I mean, I, not that I hate it, but what about your relationship with your hairstylist, Megan McCain? What the fuck? Are there no warning flags? Like, do you not see this and in, in, in your mind maybe go, I might be getting fucked over by this person? And why athletes protest in the United States of America, like, Colin Kaepernick. The problem I have is this woman is doing this internationally. And if anyone just saw Vladimir Putin's recent uh, speech when he met with President Biden, he's using the propaganda that America is an irredeemable crap hole against us, saying you think your country is so great over there? Look at BLM. Look at everything that's happening in your country. You don't even treat your people correctly. At the same time where he's literally imprisoning people and we're having our enemies and propagandic dictators using our own. Wait. Okay, where is this argument going? So, yeah, solve racial inequity in an effort to make sure that it's not used against us as a, as a threat to our national security. I agree. If you're not going to do it out of pure empathy and morality, and because you believe it's the right thing to do, then do it because you fear that it will be used against America. Cool. Own propaganda against us, which in turn turns into a nice job telling a woman what her hairstyle should be. I mean, I tell your mom what her hair should be, and she seems to like it. But then again, we have sex all the time, so that's probably why. Got him. Real national security risk. My other problem with this is I don't understand why we all can't have shared experiences in this space or have our own stories because for some reason my relationship with the flag isn't allowed anymore. My love of, of the American flag, my love of the national anthem. And I know that it's very triggering for people and people get very upset when I talk about my dad for whatever reason, which is why I've really stopped doing it on the show unless it's. But I'm going to do it right now. Yeah. Um, black people asking for better policing in their communities and to be treated like full human beings by this otherwise occupying force 
is interfering with my love for the flag. So why don't you blacks stop it? It's really meaningful to me. But when I was growing up every year on Christmas, he would tell me a story about when he was in prison being tortured and his cellmate, a man named Mike Christian, had sewn the American flag using scraps of material he found in prison into his prison garden. Every morning, they would say this, the Pledge of Allegiance to what was sewn into his prison garb. One day, the Vietnamese captors found that and beat the living crap out of Mike Christian <laughs> to the point that his eyes and his body was so badly injured that he could barely move. And the second that he was able to move again, do you want to know the first thing Mike Christian started doing? He started re-sewing the American flag into his prison garb so his cellmates could say the Pledge of Allegiance and remember what they were doing and what they were fighting for in prison. How does this have anything to do with like Black Lives Matter? Or anything for that matter? Like, how does this have anything to do with your like weird relationship with the American flag? What the fuck? Dude, Megan McCain. I'm going to let you know right now, you can literally wrap the flagpole with the flag and shove it inside of yourself if you want. I mean, it's weird. People will say it's weird if they catch you doing it, but you can do it. Nobody's stopping you. It's completely separate from, you know, uh, making America better for black people. Everything. And I mean, everything can be considered a dildo. If you're brave enough. Prison for America. So excuse me if I don't think some of these athletes are representing America in the same way. And for some of us, I will die for this. I will die on this hill. It is not. A I will die for this. No, the fuck you won't, dude. Shut the fuck up. Dumbass. I will die for this. Yeah. Okay, dude. People claim they love America. And yet uh, I do not see flagpoles being shoved in asses and vaginas. So. Do you really love America? If I haven't seen you fillet a flagpole with the flag tied around it, I'm not believing it. Okay, I think it's bullshit. Purely, purely aesthetic. Not real. Appropriate or patriotic to go to a foreign country where you're supposed to be representing America and act like it's just about you. It's not Only Trump legitimately showed how much, uh, showed the rest of the world how much he loves America. By having sex with the flag. We know he did it. Oh, Donnie did a uh, video on, on the Trump rally. Let's go, dude. New Donnie. This is Trump's sort of first big major rally since he lost. Mm -hmm. uh, he didn't lose. He didn't lose. I know he didn't lose. Your shirt here you says Trump won. Yes, he did. Is, it, is this about 2016? It's about all of them. And 2020 and the next one. But he lost in 2020, right? No. No. Do you think what happened on the 6th of January was a sort of stain on his presidency? This was all staged. I, I truly believe that. Conspiracy theories about the election and the insurrection. Bro, why do, like... Why do diehard Trump loyalists just look a certain way? You know what I mean? Like, that's a, that's a Omega Karen right there. That... Conspiracy theories about the election and the insurrection are par for the course at Trump rallies. Yeah. But now, another false notion is circulating among some Trump supporters that Trump could be reinstated as president later this summer. What are you hoping to hear from Trump today? I hope to hear he's coming back. Yeah. Coming back in 2024? Sooner. He's coming back soon, and you guys are going down. <laughs> Trump has been falsely suggesting that the sham Republican audit in Arizona could lead to the election being overturned. Stay tuned for Arizona. We need two states. It's going to be a very interesting time. How do you govern when you lost? Oh, that's awesome. I didn't even know he was still fucking hitting that. I didn't realize he was still in injecting so much copium, dude. This is unhealthy. This is actually incredibly unhealthy amounts of copium. A question Trump should be asking himself is, how do you govern when you're lost? When you've lost? Seriously. Yet he does not. Sadly.
Sadly, he does not ask himself that. How do you govern when you lost? You think the election is going to be overturned in some way? Oh, absolutely. There's oh, no absolutely. The military already knows it was a fraud. He won by over 80 percent. Ron, you genuinely believe that he's going to... He's coming back. That he could come back as soon as... Before, before the middle of August. And what if that doesn't happen? Huh? What if that doesn't happen? We're going to be in a civil war because the militia will be taken over. Among Trump supporters at his rally in Ohio Saturday... Do you have a second to chat to us? I always want to talk to a Proud Boy. No. <laughs> a man wearing a Proud Boys t-shirt and a self-described <laughs> member of the Three Percenters Militia Group. Some people believed to be associated with the group were... It never... It's always funny that the leader of the Proud Boys is just a straight fed. It's great charge for their alleged involvement in the insurrection. Do you think though what happened on the 6th of January was a bit of a stain on his, all the violence, a bit of a stain on his presidency or? No, I don't. I don't think so. I, w I was there. Were you up at the Capitol? Yeah, we was there. Yeah? Yeah. Didn't go in. Didn't do nothing. Self-report. Oh, pussy. Pussy won't admit it. Damn, what a coward. What a fucking coward. Hey, I didn't go in. Why not? Why not, brother? Take it. Come and take it, brother. That's the, but I don't believe in tearing up the cap. And you're a, you're a tree presenter. Yes. Some of your guys have been caught up in a conspiracy, right? Uh, charged by the FBI. As far as I know, there, some of them are being held, and a lot of them are just being questioned. Do you think your guys who went inside shouldn't have gone inside, or what? Yeah, I don't think anybody should have went inside. But you know, when you're worked up in that moment and you know, the adrenaline's pumping. I mean, it just just happens. Are you worried that we could see more violence? You know this motherfucker's delusional. Just looking at his haircut, okay? Even before anything else, like, what are you doing, bro? Literally, no one thinks you have hair. Like, who are you? The only person you have deluded into thinking you have hair is yourself, okay? I mean, seriously, what's happening back there, dude? Yeah, I honestly believe it's coming. <clears throat> that was pretty good. Short but sweet, clear and concise. Do not conspiracy believers are delusion. It's always insane to me how they believe without a doubt everything that could give them more copium. I mean, yeah, it's it feels real to them, dude. It feels real to them. And uh, if it's not real, then that hurts their fucking fifis. Because then, and you know, it's not real. How do you continue to disrespect elite members of Meal Team 6? Kind of weird. I agree. Boys, there's a lot of JCSs that are being uploaded. Back onto the internet. I already ran the ad. There is no ad break right now. And by God, it makes me happy. Makes me happy to see that there's more. I, I don't want to go into it yet. Okay. I don't want to go into the uh, wide VODs. You were timed out for one man spamming. Are you going to stream with any of the visitors today? Uh, I don't know. Oh, there was one last thing I want to talk about. Tucker Carlson. A whistleblower within the... Tucker Carlson now believes that... The government is spying on him. U.S. government. What, are they taking notes to be better at uh, WASP nationalism? Like, why would the government spy on Tucker Carlson? who reached out to warn us at the NSA. Bro, I'm a fucking leftist, okay? It's not a secret that the government is not too fond of my worldview, and I don't think the government is spying on me. Why the fuck would they spy on you? They agree with you on, like, 90% of everything. That's so strange.
today, the National Security Agency is monitoring our electronic communications and is planning to leak them in an attempt to take this show off the air. Now, that's a shocking claim, and ordinarily we'd be skeptical of it. It's illegal for the NSA to spy on American citizens. It's a crime. <laughs> Damn, dude, that's crazy. I can't believe the NSA is spying on American citizens, dude. That's wild. Shocking revelation. We must do something about the, the uh, horrible... Uh, the horrible way in which our military industrial complex has completely gotten out of hand. It's not a third world country. Things like that should not happen in America. But unfortunately, they do happen. And in this case, they did happen. The whistleblower, who is in a position to know, repeated back to us information about a story that we are working on that could have only come directly from my texts and emails. There's no other possible source for that information, period. The NSA captured that information without our knowledge and did it for political reasons. The Biden administration is spying on us. We have confirmed that. This morning, hang on, yesterday we heard from You clearly didn't get the vaccine because I got direct access to my FBI agent after getting the COVID shot? I mean, who the fuck was he emailing? If the... Look, the government is dumb as fuck, right? But even they are not so dumb as to very openly fucking spying on someone like Tucker Carlson. Unless he was uh, talking to someone as one of his sources that was already under government investigation. Ken Klippenstein says he FOIA'd the FOIA uh, request. For the record. So, I don't know if that's a meme or not. I have information, but I can only confirm that it's true because of my private email. Checkmate. Maybe they're actually trying to crack down on white supremacy by going after Tucker. Yeah, I fucking doubt it. I would be very shocked if they were doing that. Okay. There's a lot of good videos uh, to watch today, including the JCS one. But before that, I'm going to do an early LSF. I want the kids to eat today. I want the LSF kitties to eat today, okay? They're eating good. Because I rarely ever do it this early. John Zerka post proved that he was banned for a mistake for three months. That, I saw this. This shit's crazy. Your account was suspended or blocked due to a mistake on our part. I've gone ahead and reversed the suspension on your account. Why the fuck did Twitch send an email at three uh, 4 a.m., by the way? That's crazy. I've gone ahead and reversed the suspension on your account, so you're free to use our services once again. Apologies for any inconvenience or confusion that this might have caused. So, didn't he, uh, didn't he get suspended because he was doing, like, Tinder and just, like, openly blasting Tinder? Like, people's, uh, uh public Tinder accounts and shit? Wasn't that the reason? What is this? I'm not soy. I think I'm rather poggers, to be honest with you. Fucking Hassan was was trying to convince all the G4 people that I was a TikToker. It worked. He wouldn't stop. He kept fucking doubling down. Like I'm like I don't even. I'm not. I feel stupid. Like I'm not a TikToker. He's like I don't. I don't want to do that. So I'm like. I think I gave up, and I was like, yeah, I love TikTok. <laughs> I just. I just conceded. <laughs> I, <laughs> I don't know what they thought of me. I also told him that he invented the L dance in Fortnite. And that it was his uh it was his invention. He's a Fortnite streamer. 
Yo, can you shout out the surfs raid? Hey, shout out to the surfs. Thank you for the raid. Sorry, I don't know what's wrong with my notifications. I don't see uh, raids at all. Soda is not cool. He's just a greedy rich asshole. No, nah, he's fucking awesome. You are literally wrong. I, I, I love the, the Austin people. Like, it's going to be going to be very difficult. Uh, true, that's what makes him cool. What up, S fan? Are you moving to Austin? No, I never said that, and I'm not going to do that. I love LA. This is song guy's pissing me off. I'm leaving. S fan came in here with the surfs raid, actually. He's a big fan of Lance. Unforge. Uh, no IRL stream today. No. Soda finds out about Nick's racial buff. Great. Did you wear sunscreen? Uh, I have built-in sunscreen. It's called being black. That's not a thing. He's right. Fun fact. Black people can also get sunburn. It absolutely is a thing. That's OP. I don't get sunburn. That might just be a you thing. No, it's... What the fuck do you mean false? It's not. There has, there, there has to be black people that get sunburned. Black Yo. people absolutely can be sunburned. Like, absolutely. It's not even super rare. Like, I have... First generation Nigerian immigrant who is already like, which uh, means that he's already darker than uh, uh, black people in America because for obvious reasons, Tomei would get sunburned. It's not as intense though. Yeah, no, no, no. It's not for sure. For sure. It's nowhere near as intense. But yes, for those of you who don't know, um, black people, including dark-skinned black people, can still get sunburned. It's a racial buff. It's a passive. I mean, he's Wait, that's actually not fair. Did you think all like the black people in Africa are wearing sunscreen every day? No, I just thought like their skin was more used to it. Well, no, it is. That's why it's darker. But I meant what I meant was like it's like it's more used to it in the sense that it's like they actually are outside. Oh, the racial buff, the racial buff comes with like more protection. It's like a, but if you if you have like unlimited exposure to the sun. Or if you're, if you're black and wearing like a t-shirt, you can get a farmer's tan. You know what I mean? It's still, you still can get that. <clears throat> side all the time. Yeah. Like you take it's a white immunity, person, you put them outside all the time. Yes. Yeah, you don't have the defense mechanism, mate. That's not fair. Great. Did you wear It's solar resistance plus 40% non-immunity. Yeah. True, man. I mean, what do you want me to do? It's it's a solar resist. It's not it's not a full it's not full blown immunity. Sorry, it's just the truth. Literally, just me in a backpack. I'm good with it, and I won't even say a word the whole time, and I'll have a great time. Like I'm good with that. But at the same time, and and you know that's one issue with IRL streaming with groups, right? But then we get into even more issues of like, you know, you got callers, motherfuckers like calling restaurants. He's right. It's so fucking whack. It's so bad. I cannot be bothered with that. I'm just gonna go home. I get. I'm just gonna go home. Um, there's. Why are African Americans as black? Not as black as Africans. I am from North EU. Think about it. Think about why African Americans would be lighter skinned. Just think. 
There's a thing that happened called slavery. No, he didn't say that, but he said as black, not as, not as black, but I know, but he meant not as black because that's what I had said. I'm part of that. No, I know. I, I, I'm not, I'm not a, like, I'm not being short with them. I'm, I'm actually, I'm actually explaining it because some people don't know. Yes, because of the slaver raping and consensual interracial pairings. That's why. Also, on top of that, I mean, exposure to sunlight, too. Um, and if people say, like, oh, well, that's not true for Ethiopians, it's like, yeah, different parts. Africa is incredibly diverse as a continent. Fun fact. It's not just automatically everyone is black. And gigantic. A lot of different uh, climates. Um... A lot of different cultures, ethnicities. Yeah, Africa is gigantic. So, yes, there are people that live in different parts of Africa that are lighter skinned while still black. Also, we Ethiopians are mixed. Habesha literally means mixed. Yeah, like Ethiopians are lighter skinned. And then you have like literally North Africa, which is... Um, you know, uh, Arabic ancestry. So, you know. Wait, my mom is Nigerian. She's Igbo and she's really light. It depends on your tribe and colonization, to be honest. Sure. Not Arabic. Barber and Coptic. Sorry. Bad Betty. Anyway, all right, let's keep going. There's that, and then there's, dude, the potential of like real serious shit. You know, like, you got callers, but what if that when they call, they say something actually fucked up? You actually, I don't know. You know, or, or, or maybe I deal with some fucking crackhead who sees a camera, and then his fucking crackhead brain even goes into giga mode, and he becomes a super crackhead. And he like fucking gets up in my face because I I'm, I'm on TV. I'm a LA crackhead, right? And you know that's like that's what they want. Mm -hmm. So it's like, oh shit, I'm not trying to have a camera for this giga crack head. Literally just So low key, like I know this is so experience. He was absolutely correct about this in Austin. But I've said this, and we've we've argued about this actually. Where I like tell I told him that it is not uh, it's not the same for me in LA. Like LA IRL streams were never as like intrusive and ever as terrible as like the Austin ones. For some reason, I've done IRL streams all around the country. And he says, maybe it's because I wasn't as big when I do IRL streams now, it'll be different. But I, I, I feel like in Los Angeles, people don't, um, people are not like as wild as they are in Austin. That and you have a bunch of soy lefties as fans. Okay, but I have a bunch of soy lefties in Austin too. And they fucking came up to me like crazy. You were way smaller. Bro, nothing happened to you in Austin? Literally everything that he just mentioned happened to me in Austin. From actual crackheads approaching us to a caller's fucking call bombing restaurants to people 
in this community like following us around and pinpointing our coordinates on a map to find us in the middle of a highway Anyway, empty bed is no longer mine. It belongs to the GTA community. What is this? I don't know what this means. What is the song? Props to the GTA wise guy for using it in this teaser. to consider that this is like wild to consider that this is a fucking like how many year old game is this at this point wise guy does a really good job of finding the good licensed music No, I like it. Maybe it's not for you. Pizza Rat was taken. I like the, I I, I like the uh, the drop. It's pretty good. It looks better than Cyberpunk. True. all right it's like all right club music Disrespect was spotted at the Suns game. Okay. Uh, I don't even know if I can look at this or not. Am I allowed to look at this? I, I feel like I don't know if that's. He's alive, dude. That's crazy. Lil Wayne, Dr. Disrespect, and Devin Booker. Just a bunch of streamers hanging out, dude. There's just something about like the way that he was banned and how we don't know, how we still don't fucking know that rubs me in an incredibly wrong way. Like there is, there is like irreparable harm to his reputation where like, I, I mean, I don't even know if he was like innocent or not. Right. Like I have no fucking clue, but it still like gives me such fucked vibes. You know what I mean? It gives me such fucked vibes because I'm like, I don't know. I think about it and I'm like, I wonder what the fuck it is. Like, 
He's smashing on YouTube though. Like I think about it and I'm like, there's something off. Like, especially the way that it was done. <clears throat> especially the way that like, he didn't even fucking defend himself. You know what I mean? At this point, it 10,000% seems like legal stuff. I mean, but if that was the case, didn't he, why didn't he talk about it? Anyway. Wholesome Stream Sniper, give a live donation, got XQCL. Oh, where yeah. in Indonesia? Uh, uh, in Sumatra. Oh, yeah. so cool. Yeah. So you're, you're studying in Bangkok now? Yeah, yeah. Oh, <laughs> all the best on your studies. Thank you so much for yeah, your yeah, yeah. live donation. Yeah. That's so cool. XQ, XQCL. XQCL. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking Indonesian juicers, dude. Bye. Bye. Mind-boggling. Gross Gore has officially quit streaming. Uh, okay. I didn't even know he was streaming. Indie Fox been banned. We talked about this already. Destiny is a quick check on Milena's current status. The only There's only one good reason I can think of not to go. <laughs> Why are you trying to make up reasons for this? Because if I go out, Mel, uh, this is for your safety. If I go out and we have a really bad time, I'm going to hold it against you. And I don't want to, but that's just how my brain is going to work, okay? Then I'm going to hold it against you and be like, hey, my partner doesn't it's like to do anything June with me. Why don't I just like dump this loser and just go get someone else that enjoys doing fun shit, not League of Legends all fucking day. You know, this would be fun for you as well, because if we did IRL, it mm -hmm. would be really fun means for your community as well. So there's so many good things that we could do for this. Wait. You're in the other room, right? Yes. Wait, can you move your arms back and forth for a second? What? Did you do it? Yes. All right, I didn't hear any shackles. If you want to get the fuck out, then fucking leave, okay? No. Got him. Soda popping. Reacting to homeless people in LA. Uh, I thought the tents mm. on like the side of the road were like people camping. Because, like, people are visiting L.A. and just didn't want to buy a hotel. I'm like, I'm just going to camp here, bro. You know, like, I, it's no. fucking homeless people. Uh, I thought. I mean, they have him in Austin, too. What the fuck? Don't want to save some at night from the couch. Use whichever one you prefer, okay? Cutscene skip mod is allowed, can be found in the resources page. Did nice. someone walk into the room about 15 minutes ago? Someone important, and you said you would be right there? Some goldfish. Damn, this nice. See, I'd have my TTS on too if it was helpful like that. Sort of calls for a meeting about Brian. Hey guys. Thanks for coming to this meeting. Uh, I've got some serious business proposals that I wanted to talk to you all about. Um, overall, a lot of the uh, a lot of the stocks have been a little bit down, and I think that's because of uh, the new system that Brian's implemented. And I, I wanted to talk about um, about changing it up a little bit. Um, Brian, obviously being new to the company, uh, doesn't really know what we're looking for um, and the kind of direction that we're trying to set forth on. So. Um, I think it's a good idea that we, um, just like his entire system he's implemented, we just drop Brian all together. And that's why I've called you all here. Who's Brian? <laughs> what is this? I don't understand. Why do the Austin streamers pretend like they've never been to LA? Isn't TwitchCon in Cali every year? They don't, they don't know about Skid Row? Oh, the... Brian TTS voice. Oh, here, here is the fucking gay couch that you wanted me to look at. The IKEA Pride collection is insanely cool. There you go, dude. Inspired by the bisexual flag. Bro, what the fuck? Is this real? Is this actually real? 
Inspired by the progress flag? What the fuck is this couch, dude? No shot, this is real. Click the link, shut the fuck up. What? Bro, this is... Remember what I said? Remember what I fucking said? Wait, hold on. I'm gonna keep that open because I want to see it later. Remember what I fucking told you about, like, Pride merch? About corporations, like, making Pride shit? And how ugly it is? And all this other stuff, like... It's just so whack, dude. It's just platforming queer designers. They're not for sale. I mean, that's nice. I mean, you can't sit on it. Like, you physically... Actually, this one looks kind of... The transgender pride flag one is, like, actually has utility. But this one... Fuck. Where is it? This one is crazy, dude. Like, you come home, and this is the fucking, this is the couch. What do you do? You know, like, I, I've made fun of my mom on here a bunch of times for having, like, like, it's such a Turkish and, I guess, just mom thing to do in general. To have, like, pillows that are impossible to lay on. You know what I mean? Like, my grandmother loves pillows that are, like, Pillows that hurt you when you, like, lay on them. You know what I mean? Shit that just, like, sticks to your face with, like, little beads and stuff. And I've never understood why. Like, it loses its utility, okay? This is the couch version of that. When I get home from work, I need to trim my couch before I sit on it. It's like, why? Why? The whole point of a pillow is you lay on it and it's supposed to be comfy. The non-binary one is also like, sorry, don't get mad at me, but like, I, I feel like you need to be able to sit on these things, right? It's got clasps, dude. It's like off-white shit. Also, I don't know who decided on the flags. I don't know who decided on the flags. But trans people really cooked the rest of the LGBT community. Because their color coordination, like on the trans one, is just like so OP in comparison to the non-binary one. I'm sorry. No disrespect to the MBs, but like these colors literally look horrible together. Okay? Like it's just such a terrible fit. Black, purple, yellow, and white. I'd be so pissed. Like what the fuck? Well, I guess the non-binary people also... uh Take advantage of the trans one, too. So I guess it's all right. But, like, seriously, all the other ones are, are, are... I didn't even know. What is progress? I didn't know there was a progress flag. That's just like your opinion, man. Dude, you suck at colors. Wait, really? I'm wrong? The NB colors on the flag actually go together? I I'm sorry. I'm not wrong. You just have color blindness. Okay? You literally just... I don't know. You just don't know how certain colors are supposed to work uh, together. So 
the bisexual one's pretty good too. Like, as far as uh, as far as the bisexual flag colors goes, like, <laughs> what the fuck? When you change or to and, nobody believes you. <laughs> What the fuck, dude? <laughs> ah! <laughs> I like to get super sad when I come home. Why, people, pussy. I don't know what's going on with the hands, but... They fucked us buys over with this couch. This couch, ironically, not buy behavior. Okay. It's not giving me, it's not giving me buy vibes at all. In the same way that a clear iPhone case would, you know what I mean? Or in the same way that like uh, sitting uncomfortably, like buy sitting would. This couch does say poly more than it says a uh, buy, but who knows? Inspired by the pan flag? The pan one's kind of cool. It reminds me of like those uh, Algida like ice creams, you know? This is literally the Hillary Clinton couch. Like, no disrespect to the lesbians, but what the fuck? This is straight up like. This is in the closet lesbian conservative auntie couch right here. I like that one. Oh God. I'm sorry to hear that. <laughs> oh Jesus Christ, dude. mansion of the boys. There's a cool paint of Buddha and down either side. This is turf seating right here. It's just straight up. It does. You just dissed lesbians. Oh, probably the most comfortable one. Yeah, it does. Inspired by the gender fluid flag. This, I don't know what's going on here. This is more like. See the gender fluid one too. It's just like. This is literally like one step removed from Blue Lives Matter, dude. What is this color scheme? <laughs> when you're gay, but you also love supporting the police. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ, dude. <laughs> Stop, you're tearing the LGBT community apart. Like, who de who decided? Who made these decisions, dude? The trans one is, is, uh, is like, kind of cute and also uh, good, decent colors. We talked about it. Six months. Oh, they're just running it again. Inspired by the ace one? Wait, hold on. I gotta see this. Shit, dude. It's like moving too fast. Okay, that's just a normal couch and they just drape this thing on it. It's just like you, you put a fucking throw rug or whatever on the couch. It's still a, a couch, like a regular couch. Okay. It could also be a Time vagina. Flies. Thank you for the great work you do, Hassel. That's the most sexual couch, asexual couch I've seen. Yeah. Inspired by the two spirit flag. It's all right. Shit over a year watching this himbo. I guess. I I don't have a lot of opinions on this one. The two spirit flag is pretty cool. But shut up. They're not going to sit on the pro progressive one, right? Please tell me they sit on the progressive one. I really hope they sit on the progressive one. Okay, this one's uh, this trans one is, is not great. Okay, it's just like again, 
this is this is giving me like grandmother vibes you know what i mean this is like literally some shit your grandma would have it's actually a grandma couch it is when i found community that i really felt loved finding out oh you're not the only one and there are whole communities out there that's why i love the trans flag so much the support of my family has been tremendous uh, in my transition I I mean, the tr this, this trans couch is OP in comparison to the other ones. I wish I would have done it sooner. Like, they could literally sell this, and people would buy it, and people would sit on it. Like, it looks kind of cool. It's a beautiful thing to realize that there are a lot of asexual people out there, and there's nothing wrong with me. I'm not broken. Being non-binary doesn't mean I have to be masculine. It doesn't mean I have to be feminine. I can be whatever I want to be. I'm a two-spirit person, you know? I am Cree. I am a youth. My existence is the resistance. This love seat actually represents the comfort that I feel within myself. Just to feel heard and to feel seen. And loved. And loved. <laughs> That's powerful. Yo, why didn't they sit on the progressive couch, dude? I wanted to see a progressive ass on the progressive couch. You feel me? What's up? Why aren't they doing it? I need to, I, come on. Yes! Yes! <laughs> Oh God, it's so uncomfortable. It's like, it's got those like little things that would prick at your butt. Gays can't sit normally meme. <laughs> now that's fucking, that's, I don't Yo, know if that's bi sitting or gay sitting, but. I feel like by sitting is when you crumple within yourself, though, when you pull your legs in front of you. Plug. Progressive sitting. Check yourself for ticks after sitting on the progressive couch. Okay. Oh, that's funny, dude. Uh, this is great. The lesbian flag fucks like a rabid rhino. At an early age, Brian knew he wasn't straight, but initially wasn't sure exactly what the right label was for what he felt. A poem he wrote for Canadian Art Festival speaks to an experience with his uh, previous partner who did not accept his bisexual identity. What? Dude, the... Again, like... I feel like... I feel like designations that came after, like the OG... Uh, uh, LGBT, not that like they didn't exist beforehand, but, but when they became, when these designations came after like the main LGBT, they got stuck with shitty colors. I'm sorry. It just feels like ace people got fucked over a little bit. Okay. It's true. Like, the, all the cool flags and the cool colors were taken, and I feel like ace people were just like, yo, all right, whatever. We'll just do gray and, and black. <laughs> no, I like purple, but... ha. <laughs> Yeah, LGBT was like, all right, <laughs> we got the whole rainbow. It's the only flag that works for goths, though. They're, these are pretty ones, too, which just makes it that much worse. Yeah, like the MB flag colors are so bad, dude. And the gender fluid flag uh, colors actually feel like it's like when you're queer, but also blue lives matter. 
<laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, Jesus Christ, dude. That's like, that's literally, that shade of blue is literally the Blue Lives Matter shade of blue. Especially next to the black the one. Way. That flag automatically, I see that from a distance. I'm like, oh, Blue Lives Matter. Got it. They do matter. <laughs> Come on, you know I'm right, dude. That's literally the thin blue line. That, that shade of blue is cop blue. <laughs> People be like, no cops of pride, and they come in <laughs> with the gender fluid flag. <laughs> oh, God, dude, Jesus Christ. Brutality blue. Yeah, exactly. I guess it begs the question of whether it needs to be aesthetically pleasing. No, very clearly not, but... I just think it's funny. <laughs> okay. I keep thinking you're going to stop making these jokes, but you haven't. Can you chill out, lol? These people literally identify with these flags, and you're, like, actually finding ways to shit on them for a joke. Chill. 12-month subscriber. Definitely not bait. Definitely not bait. 100% a real fucking take. This person, Emma from the internet, is literally, I'm not going to ban him. It is actually, unironically, the most leftist person here. Please, instead of pointing to them and saying, uh, Lib, you should be celebrating how leftist they are. Leftism is when no jokes. And the, left, the less jokes you have, the more leftist you are. Don't at them. Don't yell at them. They're just the most leftist person here. It's true. Remember. You have to remember. The less you laugh at jokes, the more leftist you are. Yeah. Leftism is when good jokes, which you don't do. Yeah, totally. No, you're right. Some of these colors are definitely... Uh, yeah, no, you're right. This, the gender fluid flag certainly does not uh, have the blue lives matter blue on it. You're right. I'll just lie. I'll just lie to you to make you feel better. <laughs> I'm sorry, dude. Honestly, it feels like you're betraying some of the longtime members of this community by giving us an ad break at the top of the every- Oh, fuck! God damn it! I had a good one lined up! I had a good one lined up! Symbolizes bipartisanship. I was gonna say, like, leftism is when you fucking know that the top of the hour is coming, and the more you know, the more leftist you are. Fuck, dude! You fucking- Here, here's the fucking ad break, okay? Are you happy? Yeah, there you go. Top of the hour, every hour, stop for a six second ad break. You know how to avoid them at this point. All right. You know. You can subscribe with a Twitch Prime for free with five dollars. VPN ad break. Here's the fucking there you go. Here's the ad break now. I have to pee so bad. I'll be back. We're two months gamers.
Hello chat P post down. I have massive Kuna Buna. What did Hermes say? Okay. Dog helps out an injured player. Pogo. Cam Johnson a chance for a three-point play. Damn. Almost. Almost. And then security's like, get the fuck out of here. Hold on. Weirdo. Bro, this literally looks fake. What, what, whatever kind of lens they used makes this crowd look fake. The sandback, yay. The, read top comment. Doc giving him the 5G. Uh -huh. Anyone down to boof? Lol, poor kid. I want a sex toy. Hey, oh my god! You want I want a sex toy. <laughs> oh no, dude. Oh no. Misgive Assaults Park employee? Of course you You got this. Oh yeah. That's one. Oh Jesus. Let's try and hit the board. Oh. Very close, very close. Good. Oh. Remember, accuracy, not straight. Please don't throw it that hard. Can you please not throw it that hard? I don't like getting hit with Facebook. Wait. Whatever you guys. He's going to jail, dude. <laughs> Poor guy has to work for fucking 725 an hour to get lobbed in the face by some fucking Twitch streamer with a beanbag, dude. Good thing he's got low T, so he can't actually crack him out that hard. He just looks... It's just for show. Don't worry, boys. That's one. Can we do two? That's two. That's four. Oh, I could have done that. Oh! Oh! I'm so proud of you. I'm so proud of you. I got all six. All right, Espen, you won that one. Nice job, nice job. No. <laughs> you wouldn't have these type of games in a communist society? <laughs> Why not? <laughs> Communism is when no fun. And the less fun that happens, the more communism oh, it is. It's such a funny take, dude. Soda gets degenerate checked. I'm out of here. Okay, in auto, okay, good. Continue. What? I got an auto blow. It's a, it's a basically a flashlight that basically like has a ring that goes up and down. Uh, that's like it's supposed to like jerk you off. It's like an. Oh, pathetic, dude. I have the ArcWave Suckmaster 3000. This bitch, dude, doesn't even have a. He just has an auto blow. <laughs> Get at my level, dude. An automatic. I thought I thought Soda Poppin one had money. Two was a real degenerate. Absolutely destroyed by my superior degeneracy and also I guess more money. Flashlight. That's true. Destroyed him. Ten hours ago. It, Eleven comments in before sex toy sponsors Twitch the next Meta Pagman. Archwave Suckmaster 3000 is not a thing. I googled it and find Archwave on Ion Masturbator. I think that's what he meant. So I probably got it for free, so... I mean, I literally got it for free. That was... I was just kidding as well. Will Neff saves a life today. Holy shit, driving home from stream and I see this guy's eyes in the middle of the highway after sprinting through traffic a full minute, I nabbed him, thank God. Damn, dude. Will, you gotta fucking dial it back on how hot you are, brother. Too much. Too much. 
My man's out here literally saving kittens, dude. Cutie Cinderella gets scared on a crazy roller coaster hill. <laughs> oh, God. oh, God. I hate this. <laughs> you guys want to know the real reason why I didn't go to Universal? I don't. I hate roller coaster. I'm like deathly afraid of this shit. Okay, not this. Like, this is a joke. This is a joke. That's not that bad. That's not that bad. That's not that bad, to be fair. But. Miss Gift dies? Touch the button. Right behind you, Miss. Button. Universal doesn't even have good roller coasters. Uh, yeah, what? As in, like, people don't die? Will being generous. Thank you so much. Aww. Oh, it's cute. You're such a sweet. No worries, bud. Austin! Alright, we've got in the next one Ludwig and Peter once more. Crowd favorites. Oh, he gave him the other one. Oh, well, they got them both! Oh, I want... You want the wig? Yeah! yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's cute as fuck. Brother, I see the wildest things when I'm on a roller coaster. I wouldn't want that to be filmed. Yeah, I agree. Okay, that was uh, that was our LSF portion. You ever heard about the roller coaster that's supposed to kill you humanely? What? I don't want that at all. I I don't like that. I that sounds terrible. That sounds actually fucking terrible, dude. Lil Nas X was the funniest. With the funniest tweet of the year. What did he say? Since y'all doing this all... Since y'all still doing all this over a kiss, I'ma just... Okay. Do it. You won't, pussy. Do it, coward. All right, new JCS, 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 new JCS. 